Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Alright, let's continue, shall we? Uh, we were just trying to finish up decompression resistance data. Uh, I remember building Vitalik Epoxy on the ground. Forgot to mark it on the map here. Epoxy. And apart from the hiccup with the belts, that was pretty easy. It was actually a copy-paste job. Uh, did we finish setting up the shuttle? I believe so. Let's add that here as well. And in orbit. Uh, I think we've set this one up also. Fantastic. Alright, so we should get our epoxy here sometime this century. Uh, we're waiting on blank data cards and significant biomass. We're waiting on significant biomass for a few things, which ultimately traces all the way back to experimental genetic, which I think was stuck on uh, blank data cards. Okay, so it's all basically just blank data cards at this point. Um, I do want... Oh. I forgot I built this block as well. Hmm. Oh, that's right. We've got uh, space platform scaffolding here. Plating, rather. Um, so that's going to go there. And we haven't used any of these other blocks yet. Um, I think I would like to put... Rough data storage substrates right about here. So let's do that. And I'm going to start from the orbital configuration this time. Rough data storage substrate. Actually, it stacks to 100. If we copy-paste, it's a bit easier to be sure that we get them all. And this one just has to be set to rough data storage substrate equals... Wait, what? No. Uh, rough data storage substrate equals zero. Is That's when we take off. Um, if this ID is 124, we probably want this to be 123, 122. Uh, let me just double check that, though. I may have broken my convention. This is 10... Oh, oh, that's copper plate. 124, 125, 126. Uh, yeah, I think... My numbering system has gone slightly off the rails here. Um, so we'll just make sure we take a number that isn't taken yet. Uh, one, two, five, six, seven, eight. I guess this one can be... Well, actually, no. I'm going to use this one, probably. Yeah, let's make it 125. Even though in this block over here. Uh, Phil Gerd, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so this one's going to be 125. And then we need our spaceship builder spider. Dark sky full of stars. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's make some brick shuttles. Hopefully we've got enough floor, actually. Uh, should do. Brick shuttle goes here and here. 
Cannot build on snow. Oh, the tree's done it to us again. Get out of here, tree. Okay. Get rid of all this wire. What a mess. Okay. Uh, brick shuttle goes here. I'm good. Fantastic. We're going to set this storage filter to uh, rough data storage substrates. And copy that across. Make sure all of those wires are connected. Make sure we whitelist rough data storage substrates. Fantastic. Set requests for the rough data storage substrates. And what number was this? 125. 125 clamps to 125. And I'll just add this symbol here. Did I? I think I got all of these. Well, it was one way to make sure. And then I'm going to copy paste these settings across. This will be RDSS Shuttle 1. And RDSS Shuttle 2. We need to set this filter here. We need to request eight train loads of rough data storage substrate. 128,000. Uh, right about here. Come to think of it, I think there was a reason I set this higher, and it was because the storage chest, uh, the buffer chests are going to end up with resources, and eventually it, it's possible to end up with such an amount that the trains won't come if we're not asking for more than can fit in here. We need to make sure there's always a shuttle landed here, though. I see lots of progress since last time I watched. Uh, that's good, I guess. Uh, yep, we have taken our time, like, for example, right now, rather than focusing on rushing into new technology, I'm setting up this whole different uh, logistic train uh, chain, whereby we've got a new type of ship, we are setting requests on the buffer chests on the ship. We're deducing how much is in the buffer chests. We're bringing stuff for the cannons. And then the cannons do their thing. The stuff on the ground. Why have I not set this? Here we go. Change that to... Ingots. Uh, the stuff on the ground does its thing, making capsules, we send them back up. Since we don't have a space elevator, this is what we have to resort to over this planet that's too damn big to land on with our spaceships. Um, I mean, technically we could, uh, but for one thing, there's just not that much oil, and it would be a pain to get it all in order to refuel the ship. Um, to get our copper ore. So instead we're using cannons. That reminds me, I want to take one of the outposter ships. Um, seems like it's fully resupplied. Uh, 
Um, that's looking a bit scuffed. I've been shuffling the chests around a bit. Why is the used up uranium fuel cell not being taken away? Set requests should be everything in the logistic network. Oh, I see. I think we're going to change this part. No? Oh, is this it? This might do some stuff that I didn't intend. It's supposed to be taking everything from the spaceships that's not supposed to be in the spaceships. Uh, and or the block here. But I think... Ooh. Yeah, no, that's not going to work the way I would have hoped. So do I, do I get this right? The bigger the planet, the better the core miners. But what happens if you cut off, cut off the surface? Will the core mining get worse? Uh, bigger radius means you get more out of core mining, yes. But it also takes more uh, rocket fuel to take off from it or energy for delivery cannons to do their thing. Uh, for example, where I was just looking, uh, Sanj. Sanj orbit, um, firing these cannons down to here takes very, very little energy. In fact, it instantly recharges. We actually do get just about our five second crafting time as advertised here. But, uh, for every, well, never mind the ratio, but the delivery cannons down here require a lot more time to charge up, um, and a lot more energy to fire. 472 megajoules versus 32 megajoules to send this from orbit down to the planet and vice versa. Uh, anyway. Oh, that's right, I just upgraded the, uh, Vulcanite block. Fantastic. Why are the trains sitting idle? What? Uh-oh. Oh, it's got stone in it, that's why. Just, just get going. That's a one-off thing. From when we built this. Okay. Uh, where were we? Nervous orbit. I need to get one of our... Okay, I'm just going to fudge this for the moment. I guess we'll do that, but also I'm going to put a requester chest in for... Spent uranium fuel cells specifically. And then let's get going to Sanj Orbit. Uh, so the reason we're going is to put in a lot of heat exchanges, uh, scaffolding and solar panels perhaps, more energy beaming. I think we've got everything. That should be fine. Away we go. Okay. Meanwhile, at our build over here, uh, we've got Vitalik Epoxy and Blank Data Cards on this shared belt. We've got a Significant Biomass has its own belt. These inputs have a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio if we ignore the recycling. Uh, significant biomass is actually slower, but I wanted the 
Oh, I didn't finish this part yet. Yeah, I want the significant biomass on uh, this belt so that we can... I guess it doesn't matter. Oh, and I haven't done this wiring yet. I thought there was a reason, probably... Maybe from a different build, I was thinking I want filter inserters to be able to reach... Uh, to be able to touch this and blacklist whatever's in this chest. But it could be either the short inserters or the long inserters this time. Uh, so, our total throughput for all of our significant biomass uh, net consumption is 10.86 per second. That's pretty slow. So we can just do... Well, let me do this part first. Actually, I think I've got a blueprint handy for this. Um, I'll just do this one and then trim it a little bit. Actually, copy paste this part, flip it round, and then we've got our one belt. Oh, that doesn't actually reach. Oh, that looks kind of weird. Alright, so I don't suppose we can squeeze it through here somewhere. That seems good. Don't need to balance it, it's going to saturate easily. Alright, so this goes here, this goes here, and that's basically it, I think. Trim that. Don't forget our wiring. Uh, which belt? This one. This belt here is going to be our significant biomass. Uh, also, we definitely don't need stack inserters for that part. The same can probably be said of our other two resources. Oops. Uh, two, half a belt each. Yeah, I'm pretty sure fast inserters are okay here. And then... This one is significant biomass, so long arms on this side. We can actually just reference... We can actually just look at which ones of these have wires already, but we have to make sure we connect it to the correct chest. So this one, and 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 this one. Seems good. And then on this side, input chest, which, which one is which? That would be the short inserter this time. Okay. Input chest, input chest. Input chest. Input chest. And... Input chest. I think they already have their settings. Fantastic. Uh, I need to set the LTN stuff. So we're looking for... Uh, let's say a couple of train loads of Vitalik Epoxy, blank data cards, and maybe a bit more significant biomass because the stack size is very small. So let's see. 
16,000 Vitalik Epoxy. 16,000 blank data cards. And... Uh, stack size for this is 5, right? So let's go 5 times 160 times 6. There's only 4,800. Uh, where is it? There it is. Fantastic. Let's name our station. This and this and some of these. Switch that on. And the output, uh, I haven't actually put this rail here yet. Uh, how many outputs do we have? Oh. We have a junk data card and contaminated biosludge up. Okay, so we're going to have high priority pickup on this side, one fluid, one solid, and just a regular pickup on this side. Our max rate is only 10.86, so we could probably go for a smaller. How close do I have to get it? That's kind of far. Let's go for the smallest station possible. Nah, I want it to be able to accumulate a lot. Let's just go for a regular balanced loader here. Alright, so stack and settings. And then, where's our output? It's these two belts. Let's filter that. Actually, let's do it like this. And... Make that a bit more symmetrical-ish. Chunk data cards. Actually, let's do it like this. Chunk data cards to this side. And the rest down here. Can we make that a bit more, more better? That's a bit more symmetrical. And then on this side, how many junk data cards are we looking at? Uh, 10.6 per second. Okay. We'll start by doing a Fluid pickup, and we'll give it a few chests. Let's see. Stack in certains. Just gonna limit these. Actually, 10.6, that's... 10.6 per second, that's not that slow. The moment there's enough for the train, it's going to be backing up the belt. Okay, fine. We'll do... We'll do a normal pickup here. Uh, 
Alright, so this goes here, this goes here, this is going to be jump data card specifically for the balancer, and... That's still going to reach, fantastic. Alright, and for the millionth time, this is Jump Data Cards plus 25 degree Thermo Fluid. I'm pretty sure it was 25 degrees. Let's double check. No, it's um, Contaminated Bio Sludge, which is another pickup station that we've done a number of times. Fantastic. Let's not forget to connect this one. Uh, and what's our product? Decompression resistance data. E comp. Fantastic. I think that is our block. And we still haven't got a single delivery for any of our inputs for this one. Why do we have no scaffolding here? Also, what's missing over here? It's a bit of rail, it looks like. Oh, there it goes. Cool. Let's add a tag. Decompression data. Resistance data, that is. Oh, sorry, I missed that earlier. You can decrease the radius for smaller save gain. Will this affect the ratios? Uh, if you decrease the radius, yes, but you can you can trim the surface, which doesn't actually decrease the radius. Yeah. Uh, radius is just radius. So, unless you're... I don't know if you can even mess with that in world generation. Uh, but once you've got the planet radius, you're stuck with that. Let's go back to the mole for now. Don't have any plans on Nalvis at the moment for myself. Do we have any stones stuck in these? Doesn't look like it. This one's kind of... Well, this side is busted, but that'll sort itself out. That's good. Okay. Did we get rid of all the uranium? I think we did. Away we go. You're also looking for uranium. I think this will be the last of it. Oh, I just walked past that, didn't I? Why don't I come over here and clean this up now that we've gotten rid of all that? I've actually got some sulfuric acid to recycle if we can. What are you doing? Uh, we're not going to be needing that. At all. Which fluid depot are you going back to? Good, that'll sort itself out. And same for you. Hmm, that's a lot of sulfuric acid still. Are you still looking for uranium? Oh, there's still a little bit left. Fair enough. I forgot how much can be in a chest compared to a cargo wagon. Okay. Um, so... 
you know, everything's infinite and our throughput of most products is total saturation at the moment, so I don't think I'll stress that much over this sulfuric acid for once. It does feel weird just deleting like 100k sulfuric acid, even after saying that though. And there's just, there's literally one uranium left. I'll just put that in my trash slots. It'll sort itself out. Cool. And what do you think you're doing? Uh, could you please go to... They're all full, actually. How about this one? Until empty. And then back to your regular depot. That'll recycle the fluid that it's carrying. Oh. So what have we got for Bioscience 4? We've completed decompression resistance data. I think we've done comparative genetic data as well. Uh... No, we'd barely started on it. Okay. Biomass, significant biomass, blank data card, and it just spits out comparative genetic and some biosludge. That's really straightforward. I think the only thing to scratch our heads over with this build was how to shape it, and it's going to be too fast for the inserters to keep up, probably. Oh, that's right. I was thinking of shoving that in to an existing build because it's so quick biomass significant biomass so probably here and then no it was one with blank data cards uh oh was it here no i don't really remember i think i changed my mind and decided to just do this quote-unquote properly anyway. So if we go kind of fast, every one of these needs 12.5 blank data cards per second. Uh, that's going to overdo it. It's also going to make 12.5 per second, which we really don't need. Probably. Uh, why don't we just... What's the ratios? Every single input in this recipe is the same rate. But the stack size for biomass and significant biomass is way, way, way smaller. Literally ten times smaller, actually. So... What should our station look like? Um, I'm thinking... Let's move that for a second. I'm thinking four belts. Well, it's not the number of belts, actually. Or is it? We've got... We're going to have tons of space because the machines are going to be super fast compared to the belts. So, why don't we start with this? And I was thinking of doing some shared belts like so. And I'm not going to fall for this trick for once. Uh, instead of setting it up like biomass... significant biomass and then realizing too late that that doesn't actually put them on separate sides of the belt we're going to do this like we're supposed to 
and then biomass equals zero significant biomass equals zero read hand contents hold read this bit of belt and that should keep them all swinging in sync Uh, we can fit three train loads and a little bit more for each of these two resources here. Uh, more like 3.5, actually. 3.6. Yeah, 3.6 train loads, to be precise. So we'll aim for three train loads of each with a high train limit because tiny stack size, it takes the trains a second to unload it. And we need a lot of trains. And then I was going to put blank data cards up here. Uh, if we have two belts each for our biomasses, that limits us to seven machines if I don't fiddle with the modules here. Uh, and that is two belts of blank data card. Can I actually... Well, no, it doesn't matter. If there is a way for me to get four belts... I I've never actually tried this, this part of this build before, and now that I think about it, I'm surprised if I haven't, but I can probably, no, I don't think I can. I want to get a saturated belt out of each cargo wagon, like so. The minimum spacing for that would look like this. No, it would look like this. And then we just have to merge them. So that would go there. I think we do have room to do this. Maybe. Uh, that's a hard maybe. This could go here. Is that how I did it with these ones? Sort of, but not really. If I do the same thing over here, we might not have the length of underground belts to make this happen. I could squeeze it through there if I can just reshape this a little bit. Hello, hello, Daniel. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, is there a way I can... I mean, I can merge these two like this here and maybe save a tile here or there, but it, it's not going to make a difference to the main point, which is... actually put this here. Oh, that works. That's actually really good. Okay. So this is two belts. And can we successfully mirror this, even though it's a little bit asymmetrical? I think this will be easier, actually, because it doesn't stick out. Maybe? Oh, we're missing this part. Oh. 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 I am seeing the problem with this. 
hands up if you can spot the problem with this build. There's no chests on this side. Yeah, I seriously doubt I'm going to find room to get a belt out of each cargo wagon up here. We'd have to stop this. And then... There's no way. At least, not if we shape the output like this. Is there another way to get... Um, two of these inserters outputting on one half belt each? Taking up as little space as possible? I think it's just going to be the same space, if not worse. Good morning. Uh, Vetkje. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Well, that's a diversion anyway. Um, it's actually not relevant for this build in a number of ways. But firstly, we only need half as much blank data card as these two combined. And secondly, uh, we would have plenty of space, so I could just change the way the rail comes in here if I really needed that throughput. So we're going to get 90 per second uh, blank data card from here, I think. We only need seven machines, which I hate that it's an odd number, but what can you do? I mean, I could do eight machines. Maybe I could even... It, it would bottleneck on the machines then, but at least we'd have an even input. And I would need to have at least three belts of input better to have four. A hundred, uh, 90 per second of these two is really overkill though with the tiny stack size. I think I'll just do like six. Let's see. 75 per second. Belts can easily keep up. That's still 1.5k biosludge per second and 75 comparative genetic data, I think that'll be okay. I, I really doubt we're going to need much more than this, and we can easily double it if we have to. Um, are we still going to use this layout with the belts? We've got each individual machine 12.5 per second. Oh, and our outputs, there's only one physical... I think I'm just going to get rid of these belts, actually. It's just going to confuse things. Uh, output fluid. Let's figure that out later. So, how many inserters? If it was direct insertion, we would need only half an inserter per resource. That would still be more than one stack inserter for input. Uh, we can definitely manage with one stack inserter for output. Uh, but realistically, I think we're looking at at least three. If we're taking from a belt, we're looking at at least three stack inserters to support each of these machines. Um... Like, preferably one for each input. Uh, what about... On this half, we get more than half a belt of each, so we can't exactly split them. Oh. That's what I was doing over here. Well... Hmm. I do feel like... 
having the lazy inputs here. I could change the way we do it a little bit. I haven't done this before. Let's see. So I want... Uh, I am, it's not going to be a perfect half belt coming out of this if all I do is let the inserters do their thing like that. But if I merge them, 37.5 per second. What if we alternate these? Whoops. And we could have... Something like this. Except... We'd either have to bring these two together, or... More likely... What if we have an underground here? And we bring these two together, like so. Six inserters from chests, swinging in unison, until... All of them have their hands empty. And we'll read a little bit off of the belt as well. That should give us a solid belt. We don't actually need a solid belt. We need 37.5 per second. So that should be okay. Good morning, Freka. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And then, what if I just mirror this? That should be the appropriate resource. Looks good. We need to merge and split these either before they go to these machines or after the output comes down here. Yeah, that should be fine actually. Since we only need six machines and Wide area beacon is wide. Whoops. We could probably just line them up like this. Very conveniently lined up with our input stations. Auto save. What's our rate for 12.5? So probably one stack inserter of output for each of these, which means uh, we're going to have to do this kind of piping, perhaps. That can go there. Oh, that's right, we needed stack inserters for each input resource. This thing is five tiles long, so we can actually just do our underground belts like so. 
can have some splitters for the other resource. Might move that down a bit so that on the off chance we need two, two stack inserters for each resource here. We have room to... Wait. Yeah, we probably do need two. So I was thinking... No, let's just do it this way. Start with the ones on the side. And then we have a couple in the middle. Uh, and we also need blank data cards, I kind of forgot. Hmm. If it turns out we need two stack inserters, I think we do to keep up with blank data cards as well. That's a little tricky. What if, um, that's not going to help. What if, what if, what if... This goes up here, actually. No, it doesn't. This goes here... ...and here. That is really messy looking. I would prefer if we can... Just stuck these ones for now. And that should leave room for the third one here. Uh, we need like 90 blank data cards per second, right? 75. Call it two belts. So, yes. Which means I want a proper splitter for these ones. How about like this? Yeah, I like that better. That one won't actually have to be a splitter. And then this needs some undergrounds. I don't like this one having to take from the corner, but since it's at the end of the belt and that'll immediately get saturated all the time, it might be okay. I could always put a splitter here if I really have to. We'll see what it does. So that goes there, that goes there, and so on. And then copy paste flip. Those are our inputs. We've got our outputs over here. Uh, 37.5 per second is more than half a belt. I think just to make it easy... I'll just do it like that. 
we may or may not need more than a couple of fast inserters to keep up with 12.5 per second. Hmm. Especially with the stack inserter dropping here and blocking this inserter. Uh, we'll see. But since they swing 864 degrees per second. Uh, it's 2.4 swings per second times 3. It's going to be a little bit slower than this. 7.2 items per second. That's 14.4 per second. Depending on how long it takes to put stuff onto the belt. Partly because it's blocked by other items. The fast inserters may or may not keep up with that. The relative cost of putting things onto the belt instead of direct insertion is lower for the fast inserters compared to the stack inserters. How do you copy-paste flip? Uh, so, control c on this, and then F, by default, gives you a mirror. Uh, R for rotating. There's also one more key, but it's you get the same effect by just combining uh, rotate and flip. Uh, so I just use these two. Alright, we'll see how that goes for the output. I'm sure we'll bottleneck on resources first anyway. The day I learn? Yeah, there's lots of little things. Uh, to learn like that. Let's go blank data cards on this side. And we need one belt coming in from each side here. Um, since we only need 75 per second, that's uh, 90 over 75. 1.2, or 75 over, over 90. 0.83. Six, 5 over 6. 0.83? Huh. What a coincidence. I was just trying to calculate if I can get away with getting rid of one sixth of these inserters. And it turns out we absolutely precisely can. So what I normally do for a 90 per second uh, output from station is these inserters that swing together um, and then merging it into two belts. This gives us 90 per second like completely solid, totally reliable. Since we're only aiming for 75 per second, uh, this should be enough. And what I want to do here, if I can, uh, there is one little problem with it, which is hmm. Which is we now have an odd number on each of these, so I can't do the usual half of these on one side of the belt, half on the other. I just realized there's probably no point to this, because the thing I had in mind was squeezing this through here, but I can't actually do that. So I think we'll just go with the usual... 24 chests. We'll go for left 90 per second, right 90 per second, and I'm going to take only half of each of these. Uh, I won't worry about the lane balancer just yet. 
Oops. Uh, so this is going to go here. And this is going to go here. And we're going to bring them around and uh, merge and split them in the middle. That should be fine. There's no perfect center for this. F and G by default are the flips, horizontal and vertical. There you go. Yeah. So G gives us... Can't flip it with a rail signal. G gives us this. It's mirroring it on a different axis. Can't actually see it when I mirror it with F with this copy paste. So what I normally did was rotate, rotate, flip to do the same thing as G. Um, all right. This is going over here. And this squeeze through. Yes, good, fantastic. Uh, I think I'll put this here. And same thing on this side. need to do a proper merge here because we're getting one belt from each side. And split back down this way. I guess we can actually make this look a bit more consistent like this. The only thing that's off is that this can't be perfectly in the center. Same goes for the beacon. But that's fine. So our outputs are just comparative genetic data and biosludge. Very straightforward. Let's swap those out. Uh, we're going to be requesting three train loads, five times 160 times three, 2400. Negative two, four, zero, zero. Same goes for this one. And blank data card will be the same thing but times 10. Actually, we don't need 24,000, especially since it's going to be just as slow as the other two. Uh, let's just go for like two train loads. No, uh, let's, let's, okay, if we set it to like 10k, um, Uh, sorry, 2,000... Yeah, no, 10k would only give us like 26 seconds to replace the blank data cards. Six th uh, 8,000 divided by 75, 106 seconds to bring more blank data cards in if we request two train loads. That's fine. And station name, one, and a two, and a three. Make sure that's connected. Switch that on. Pretty sure we've finalized this. Uh, 
and then output station. Active pickup because we have to get rid of the fluid. Um, let's copy this one. Make things easier. And a standard balanced loader for our output product. It's going to be a bit of a mess bringing these together. Oh well. We've got all the space in the world. It's fine. Splitter. Oh, that actually goes straight to the middle. That's something. And then tidy this up a bit. I suppose. We have a train coming in. We have three trains coming in and it's all biomass. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's our build done, except this needs to connect. That's fine. This will be called... Comparative genetic data. Comparative. And also biosludge. Active provider. Fast inserters. Make this specific so it doesn't read from the fluid. Or the balancer. And I'm pretty sure that's it. Alright, so that is two of our four data card builds for Bioscience 4 complete, even if they are going to be waiting a while for blank data cards. Never enough blank data cards. Speaking of which, um, we were trying to set up a space shuttle system for rough data storage substrates, which is our number one bottleneck for blank data cards at the moment. Which, that is to say, actually bringing them into orbit as opposed to producing them. And then we've just got the one train station here. Uh, so let's make sure we finish doing that. Did we request them here? Probably not at the station. I forgot to turn this on. Literally just one more step. Okay. And let's say six trains can come at the same time. This should say... Rough data storage substrate, 76,800 is correct for what fits in the shuttle. However, we're going to lower it just a little bit, say 790, because occasionally the bots don't completely fill a chest for some reason. So once it's almost full, this should take off. We've already got the fuel, fantastic. Uh, I did name the shuttles already. And our train is already coming with rough data storage substrate. Fantastic. So it's going to take uh, 768. Wait, what? 16 times 48, 768, 
Yeah, uh, it's 4.8 train loads to fill one of these shuttles. Um, but it, realistically, it's going to take like 10 because the bots are going to fill up uh, fill up these two shuttles at the same time. How many bots do we have? Enough. Fantastic. Let's send you back to the mall for the moment. Get you resupplied. And make sure we mark on the map that this is for rough data storage substrates. I did double check, did I not? Um, yeah, we can only make the polished ones in space. It would be weird if I forgot to double check that when I was doing the build. So we've actually got three train loads of rough data storage substrate simultaneously. It's scheduled to be delivered here already. That's how much we've been bottlenecking on the one cargo rocket sending this stuff up into space. And meanwhile, we should theoretically be able to make um, 83 blank data cards per second. Nope, I am not here. Thank you very much for the Prime sub. Much appreciated. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. One of these days I'm going to get ahead of blank data cards for more than two minutes. One of these days. Alright, so that is the first two of four data cards out of Biological Science Pack 4 complete. We've also got Vitalik Epoxy scheduled to automatically come into orbit. We also need Vitamelange Core Fragments. Um, which I think I remember setting up here, I did, but I don't think I've actually got Vitamelange Core Fragments scheduled to be sent into orbit. So that's going to be pretty low throughput, I don't think it matters where we put it. 3.483 per second, that's if our science build is going full speed all the time. So one shuttle should last us um, five and a half hours. Cool. Where am I going to put it? I think here makes a lot of sense. I could do it up here as well, but maybe there's something else I want to put here that is really really high throughput and like low stack size like testing packs perhaps for material size oh we've already got that here but that's just an example okay so nice and close to the only place that we're going to be picking it up ever in the orbital rail block Let's put, if we put Vitamelange Core Fragments here or here, the train will go like this. Uh, and it'll be a very short trip. I'll put it down here, I think. Core Fragment... Vitima lunch. Why are we missing? Oh, this build didn't get finished. There's nothing here yet, right? Yeah, let's just put our blueprint down again. Uh, Quilson, K Wilson, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And let's drop 
our brick shuttle drop off blueprint. It's probably just a couple of pipes that we missed, but I want to be absolutely sure. I'll turn on the request for bots immediately. We'll whitelist our Venom Lunge core fragments. Set requests again because we overwrote them. A wild spaceship appears. Once core fragment Venom Lunge equals zero in the ship, send it back to Nalvis. Uh, ID is going to be plus one from the last thing we did, which is a hundred and twenty six. Where are we? One, two, six. Fantastic. So that's all set up. We'll put uh, 126. Oh, no, we already used 126. Wait, what did I... Uh-oh. What was I thinking here? This is 125, actually. And this is 126. So 127. And I'll double check that I did 125 over here. I did. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do ID 127. Which I think we already had down here. Fantastic. Let's bring our spaceship spider back from the mall. Now that it's resupplied. We'll get it to make sure it doesn't walk over some spaceships. Uh, I think this part... This little traffic jam, I remember making a mistake with the signaling. But I think we fixed it. If this is a chain signal, yeah, that's fine. So we won't get a train sitting here blocking the exit of this one. That'll be okay. All right, so Vitam Lunge Core Fragments. Core Fragment Vitam Lunge. We're going to whitelist those in this block. Um, I think I'm going to trust my former self that these stack size 100 requests should be 160k, actually. Um, because that stuff can fit in these shuttles and it will still be counted. Or fragment Vitamelange greater than this much. Or fragment Vitamelange goes here. Or fragment Vitamelange. And we're good. Make sure these are all connected, which they are. Make sure they have the right filter. Copy paste that across. Seems good. And then we actually need to build the ships. Spaceship Construction Spider is on its way. Cool. 
And at this rate, it won't be long before we get a massive, massive haul of rough data storage substrate. Uh, so a cargo rocket, if nothing fails, which it often, often, actually always does a little bit, uh, gives us 500 stacks. Uh, these little tiny shuttles give us 768. So it's more than 50% more stuff than we get from a whole cargo rocket each time we fill one of these up. Unfortunately, it does take proportionately a lot more liquid rocket fuel. But we don't have to deal with cargo rocket sections, space capsules, we don't need as big an area for the landing pad. We don't have to deal with crashed ships, which is sort of the number one thing that I like about it, honestly. Alright. Brick shuttle goes here. And then we need to set it up. First of all, let's get rid of all these extra wires. Much cleaner. We need to set requests for Vitam Lounge Core Fragments. Uh, we need to set the clamp IDs to be the same. 127. It's going to be the target. And I'll put a symbol here for Vitam Lunge Core Fragment as well. And we're just going to call this Vita Core Fragment Shuttle. Number one. Vita Core Fragment Shuttle number two. Come to think of it, it is probably completely absurd that I'm making two shuttles for this. But it's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. I already switched this on. Why are we not getting... Oh, we are. We're just not seeing a green, a yellow light displaying. But we've already got Vitam Lange Core Fragments on the way. Okay. Let me check on the outposter. Which should be en route to Sand Orbit. 28 minutes remain. Very good. Uh, I feel like there was something I had to remember about Capella's Orbit as well. I did want to add more energy beaming to this place, I think. Uh, Mycroft, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And Whiskers, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. How's your stream today? The Uncertain Last Quiet Day. That's a new one for me. Um, I know I need to put more solar and energy beaming at Angelus. I've set up the logistics there. Oh, we've actually got lots of... Yeah, I needed to retool this whole thing because unfortunately it doesn't actually evenly split the energy across these energy beam emitters. Uh, so as much as I think we've got all of the energy beam emitters that we need for this solar system, I want one going to Morpheus. No, two, two going to Morpheus because 
uh, when we update our spaceships, they're going to be running off of that beamed power. Uh, I want one aimed at this one, which we've already got, for electricity. Um, so that's two for Morpheus. I want two for Sand. One to energize our ships. And at least one to energize our power down here. Uh, so that's four. And six would give us room for a couple more power production areas. A couple more reactors. Well, a reactor isn't entirely accurate, but I like to call them reactors. But yeah, I need to um, throw down a whole bunch of scaffolding so I've got room to separate these uh, so that we can have... It's really unfortunate, actually. Because I need to spend at least two gigawatts on each of these energy beam emitters. And they don't... Uh, we need 2.4 gigawatts of power for our power plants. But that doesn't divide e evenly into these beam injectors. They're one gigawatt each. So I thought with a larger number I could get a better ratio. But unfortunately we get like six gigawatts in this one and zero gigawatts uh, in this one. And it's not just because that's the one I've decided to use. Like, if I tell this one to energize here, uh, we see the emitter strength is not increasing. Small? How is your stream going? Yeah, not too bad. This looks complex, indeed. Space exploration is pretty daunting, honestly. There's a lot to it. It was interesting. The game is highly story-based and pretty linear, but pretty intriguing. Uh, looks... It's a small quality of life mod called Space Exploration. <laughs> I guess not seeing chat... Yeah, sorry, I got a bit carried away. In time, it's an impressive expansion mod. Just read one of the devs praising it. Yeah, it's a lot, and it's very, very good, honestly. Um, I'm just going to aim this over here so I can see that I'm not actually using it. Laid on the praise for the programmer and went on what aspects they definitely include in the upcoming Factorio release. That's very cool. Oh, we've got this block to play with now. Okay, uh, but I wanted to finish Bioscience 4 if I can. So, unless I've forgotten something, we've now set up Vietnam Lounge Core Fragments to get into the rail network up here. You know, con considering there's probably literally only one thing that's ever going to use it, I almost think I should have put the shuttle landing spot here. But that would be messy to set up with the fuel and everything as well. And who knows when we want to move this. Comprehensive biological catalog. Uh, have we got our requests here already? Oh, this is tier two. Whoops. Comprehensive biological catalog. I haven't set this up yet. I've got the requests for the data cards. And oddly enough, I haven't done the filter inserters. So that is comparative genetic data. What the... I've done the inserter settings for all of these, but just not the filters. That's so weird. Uh, 
And last but not least, radiation resistance data. I thought we did that already. Okay, this goes here. And this goes here. Radiation resistance data. We didn't actually make that build yet, did we? I think it's just similar to some other radiation ones. Oh, no, we did do that. Radiation resistance data. So we've only got one more data card to go to complete our tier four. Oh, this is exciting. Um, we actually only have one data card left to go before we are completely done with every space science before deep space science. I think DSP... Uh, DSP, I don't know. I haven't seen enough of it to say so yet, but it's definitely a bit thin on some things. That's the feeling I'm getting so far. They actually did a final release a while ago. They keep doing updates to fix bugs. They suit. Okay. Uh, let's get our scaffolding spiders in position. Hopefully they've still got enough to finish the job. I think they do. And then... Why don't we go ahead and add our tag? This is going to be... Neural Anomaly Data is the only one we don't have. Radiation Resistance Data. I just want to double check. Radiation Resistance Data. Yes. Yeah, this is... This is the last of the bioscience. Much excitement. Doesn't that mean we can set these requests already? Uh, recipes? I'll just double check which ones we've done. Upgrading these to the tier 4 version of the recipe that makes um, insights. Requires more stuff and is a lot more efficient. So we've done astro. We've done energy. And we've done uh, material. And that just leaves bio. I'm going to update it like this so that they don't vomit out all of our uh, inputs. Because if I change the recipe the normal way... It's going to temp momentarily be on no recipe at all. So I can just confirm by checking that there's data cards in all of these. That we've oh, updated all those recipes. Fantastic. Nice. All right. Why have we stopped? No idea. Let's get our construction spiders down here for the moment. All right, so what does this last recipe entail before we go to deep space science? Uh, processing unit, blank data card, advanced neural gel, which we did make over here. We don't actually have any yet. We need blank data cards before we get significant biomass and probably the same applies to uh, bioelectric data. It's actually just 
Everything is bottlenecked on significant biomass, which is bottlenecked on blank data cards. So we just have to get those rough data storage substrates up here. And then we can make much, much, much more blank data card. Okay. Uh, so let's just pretend we've already got all of our resources in the rail network. Build this ahead of time. And then the recipe calls for processing unit, blank data card, and advanced neural gel. We have to recycle advanced neural gel a bit. That's really easy because it's a fluid. We just connect the pipes. And since it's in a rail block, we already have the train system bringing in advanced neural gel without ever actually filling all of the storage so that there's room. Um, not that I come to think of it, I don't know if... Well, it depends on how you do it. If you do consistently produce advanced neural gel while you're trying to run this recipe, you could block the output. Um, but that's not going to happen here. Mycroft, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, okay, so we need to swap processing units between our electromagnetic facilities. And we need to output biosludge and junk data card. And it's going to be pretty straightforward, I think. So first of all, let's grab our usual uh, beacon. We need some electromagnetic facilities. Where are they? There we go. And how many can we fit here? Let's start from the middle. One, two, three. Uh, and what's our recipe? This one? So, how are we going to rotate the pipes? Oh, wait. Yeah, we're not going to be able to do this layout. I think it's probably going to do going to be too fast anyway. Possibly. What's the recipe time? 10 seconds, maybe not. If we were to try and do this times 4. We would Oh. It's actually really slow. It's really, really slow. So we want to cram in as many machines as we can for this one. And that's going to be a slight problem. Because we need the fluid output. Well, there's two fluid outputs and we need one of them to connect to the input pipe. Um... If I stretch this out by one, actually, one, two, three tiles, this might be doable. I think we're going to have to sacrifice one of these. So I'm thinking something like this. And for the third one, we're one tile off being able to have this electromag facility touched by the beacon. Why don't we bring the outside ones closer together? And we can do this on the outside, since we don't have to be consistent like this forever. We're actually... There's only six machines. So... Oh.
are. That's really unfortunate. We can rotate this, but we can't flip it. And I can't actually have... Um, I can't actually have, like, input fluid here, output of the same fluid up here, or vice versa, without having the bio sludge pointing the wrong way. Hmm. I don't think there's going to be a good solution to this. If I do point the bio sludge in the same direction every time, bring these together. That actually... This actually doesn't work here either, which is the same thing. And we've got our output fluid down south every time. Which means we would need a pipe between each of these. Which means we can't have six machines in each column. Is there really no way around this? Take care, Mycroft. Thanks for dropping by. Yeah, is there really no way around this? We're going to have to lose, like, four machines just because we can't flip these. And considering how slow they are, that's a little bit upsetting. I could always do more speed modules in here as well for ludicrous power consumption. 30 megawatts per machine. Uh, okay. And that gets us all the way to 2 data per second. Well, times 4. Ignoring the fact that we can't actually fit this many machines. Wait, what? What's this looking for? It's looking for more speed modules still. What happened? Oh, did we just use them all up? Possibly. Okay. I'm thinking because they're so slow and we can't fit six of these vertically with each beacon, we'll probably just go five and five. I think we can fit that. Physical inputs and outputs are going to be really, really slow. So we don't need to use a lot of space for the input and output stations. Let's send our spiders back to the mall. Actually, I'll send them back here where the modules are first. How many do we have? 106 speed modules. Nice. Actually, actually, I'll send them to the mall first in case they're carrying anything that needs to be trashed. And then send them up here. This train is waiting for electrical shielding data. I wonder how that happened. Shielding data. Just have to tell it how much fits in a train. I wish there was a way to query an item's stack size. Could make this thing truly universal. Okay. So... I guess I'll just paint it over here. My idea is to have like so, repeating pattern like this. We can easily fit five of those vertically. 
what does the recipe call for? It's going to be tricky. Uh, maybe not that tricky. One, two, three. We're going to have chests between these machines. Swapping the recycled uh, processing units back and forth. Or maybe even... Since it's going to be so slow... A sushi belt might make total sense that we can put the processing units back onto. Let's see, if we have 10, 20, 40 on each side of the block. That's still a net rate that's way below half a belt for processing units. It is more than half a belt for blank data cards, but I think we can find room. That said, I think I... I think I would prefer just to do the direct insertion method with the processing units. So we're just going to do it like so. All processing units output from here go into this chest. Uh, this just direct inserts to here. And the input is going to... Where are we going to put our input? Ten, twenty, forty. Less than one belt of blank data card, but more than half a belt. That's if we go for Uh we've actually got kind of a weird number of modules here. I think we're gonna go a bit slower and go for energy efficiency. Since these things are looking at 30 megawatts so far. Now, how much do we actually have? We've got 75 gigawatts. I, I don't know how severe it's going to be when we finally turn everything on at the same time. I guess we can always add more solar panels. Where are our spiders? I want to play with the um, modules. They are creeping along. I wish I could set the provide threshold for modules from the mall a bit higher. Oh, I could always put a negative in here to pretend we've got fewer modules. Where are you going with that? Oh, that makes sense. I completely forgot about these. We need a thousand blank data cards for each belt probe. But all of those get turned into probe data. We should probably build something with better throughput for these. Uh, we're bottlenecked on the... Uh, we're, we're bottlenecked on the actual... resource of blank data cards anyway. Uh, if I haven't already, I should bump up the priority. For... Well, it's not directly here, but... If we trace back what we're missing, experimental biomass, um, experimental bioculture, and experimental genetics data. So this thing right here, we need blank data cards to get a significant biomass for a lot of builds. 
So I'm going to bump up the priority on this one. And that should get a bunch of our bio stuff flowing sooner than it otherwise would. Alright, do you guys have your speed modules now? Fantastic. Back down to here, please. Just make sure they're not stepping on any spaceships. How's our rough data storage substrate looking? Oh, the ships have taken off. Excellent. Uh, I don't see any here, though. Where did it go? RDSS Shuttle 1, Shuttle 2. They're both just sitting in Nalvis orbit. Uh, clamp ID... I didn't set this, that's why. Is 125. I'll just double check that. One, two, five. RDSS. One, two, five to one, two, five. Fantastic. And. Whoops. Fantastic. That will get our blank data cards flowing much, much faster. So we just got like 3.2, 3.4 uh, cargo rocket shuttles full of rough data storage substrates. And we can also have more trains picking them up at the same time now. Uh, considering what we actually need is 347 uh, rough data storage substrates per second. Yeah, I should have done this sooner. This right here is bottlenecked at 180 at best. Um, but I suspect rough data storage substrates. Yeah, this part here is actually bottlenecked at 90 per second. So those shuttles are going to be a really big deal. Come to think of it, I should definitely defunct this thing at this stage. So I'll just turn this off. And I'll mark that as we're waiting for it to drain so we can deconstruct it. Okay, spiders are almost back. Fantastic. That's a lot of bio sludge. And away it goes to making some more of this stuff. Did you have a chance to check out that thread on excessive biosludge? Uh, not yet, actually. Kind of busy. Okay. Uh, so, if we go full speed ahead... If we go full speed ahead... We're looking at... 40 machines on each side. Uh, so for each half of the rail block, we get 18 data per second. That's more like it. More than half a belt of blank data cards are needed. Blue circuits are quite slow. Uh, one belt of output will work for these two. And fluids are fairly slow. So 
so can we fit these? I wanted to have the input belt coming down here, if possible. It's going to be a little bit awkward, though. Clap, clap. I'm guessing that was... Nope, I don't know what resource that was. Hmm. Net consumption of processing units is very, very slow. So what if we put those in by long-handed inserter? Our outputs are also very slow. So we could have inputs for blue circuits, and we could have outputs on the outside of this. And we could have blank data cards coming down the middle. How fast do we need those per machine? It's less than one per second. So that'll be fine. Um, does this really have to... Yeah, I think it does. I might just put those next to each other. And then... Why don't we follow a pattern that's easier to follow this time? So if blue circuits goes in there, we're reading from this chest. No condition on that inserter, that's just for a wire connection. Read from this chest, blue circuits has to equal zero. I could use everything equals zero as well, which should take just as much UPS to calculate. Processing unit, whitelist, this goes here, and then same thing over here. I might need to make these pipes a bit more out of the way, so that we can have our inserters a bit closer. Or at least some of them. We need a filter. Yeah, we, this actually has to be a filter inserter for the output anyway. So the filter inserter for output is going to be neural anomaly data and junk data card. Whoops. I could just set it as blacklist. Uh, or blue circuits, but this is a bit clearer and does the same thing. And we it's not like we need a f stack inserter for speed. So neural anomaly data, junk data card, output goes there. In this case, we can connect that up here, but I want to make the version that we're going to copy-paste first. Uh, I actually kind of need to have room for this underground pipe. 
So this will go here. And this will go here. Input. Output. Blank data cards down the middle. Blue over here. I think that's pretty much it. We've got our fluid being recycled. I kind of want to connect this. I could just as easily use undergrounds there, but no, it's fine. So these are going to go. And then copy paste this. I need to remove a bunch of this belt. And that should do it. I like this layout better with the wire up here and the wire down here. It's easier to follow. So just to double check, that is all under the beacon. And then once more. Well, we don't have room. Oh, this might be too wide. Let's find out. Put it all the way over to the side. And then copy everything except for the beacon. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's overlapping the pylon in the middle. But we can probably salvage a couple of tiles here quite easily. Very easily, as a matter of fact. Except... Oh, that just works. Just barely. No, it doesn't. Uh, it kind of does. Can I put the beacon between these two long arms? No, I can't. Okay. So this has to go here. Let's connect all that. Here. I can't just put an underground here because that long arm inserter would be reaching this way. I guess I could make an exception and put this long arm down here if I really needed to save one more tile. Uh, but I don't need to do that because we can just have an underground there. And on the other end it'll be the same. That's if we ever do want to build the absolute maximum that we can fit in this block. Uh, so we should be able to fit that twice. Or I could be wrong about that, actually. Uh, I need some room to edit this a little bit. Let's see... This part goes here. Ignore that for now. Just gonna uh, 
I'm just going to remove the outer lanes for the moment from this copy paste. Remove this part and we'll see if we can fit this twice. I don't think so. I think it's going to be super overkill anyway. So why don't we just put one of these here? We can always make another block if we have to. already done. Output. Oh. Spiders move over here, please. So, inputs are two solids, one fluid. We need a... Did we get all our modules? I think we did. If we go full speed, we get 120 megawatts times 20. Uh, 22.4 gigawatts. Okay. How many solar panels is that? Uh, 648. That feels a little bit excessive. Maybe I should put some efficiency modules in here. Then again, we have a lot of gigawatts to play with. Then again, it's a big base. Whatever. We'll see how we go. We can always tweak things. I'll build this for maximum speed in terms of the belts and stuff. Uh, so, we require... Less than half a belt of blank data card, actually. Well, that makes it easy. Wait, less than half a belt for the entire thing? And that's with speed modules. And we can't really fit more vertically unless we do even less per beacon. If we do less per beacon, we can use efficiency modules, though. But it would have to be, like... Probably... Eight? Vertically? we we'll probably live with that. Well, if we go... 16 of these machines. That is still significantly less than half a belt of blank data card. And that's if I did all speed modules. So I'm thinking we could actually have uh, Oh, I forgot to set these filters. I'm thinking we could actually get rid of the long arm inserters entirely. Yeah, I, it's a little bit of work, but let's do it. It's going to be a much cleaner build. Some of the asymmetry is going to disappear. Yeah, I could have used a deconstruction planner. 
but it's already done. Alright, so this is our output belt only. We're going to have a filter inserter next to all of these input chests. Come to think of it, there's no reason for the green wire that we do have. That's just going to confuse things. So let's just remove that for now. And what we're going to do is have unconditional inserter taking from the chest. Connect green wire to this chest. Set filters blacklist. Come to think of it, it doesn't need to be a filter inserter at all. Because we're only dealing with recycling one physical item. So we're just going to set this to blue circuits equals zero. And does that rotate like this? It does. Fantastic, that makes it easy. This one doesn't have an input yet. There we go. Alright, so we take from the belt, uh, we recycle blue circuits to this chest. If there's anything in this chest... Oh, no, it does have to be a filter inserter. Because we're picking up blank data cards from this belt as well. Whoops. So, what I was going to do initially was set filters blacklist. So any resource we detect in the chest, we're not going to pick up from the belt. Set filters blacklist. This doesn't need to have a condition actually. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. And this is just going to receive um, a half belt of blank and blue circuits. And I think we will remove that for now. I think we will fit as much of those as we can vertically, and we'll just have two beacons. Let's put our signals in. Request a station. Two solids, one fluid. Uh, if we fit like, what was it, 8, 16, 32 of these, we'll need, let's call it one belt of each, which is fine. We can do a 90 per second. Coming from the station. And we're going to go blue circuits on the left. Blank data card on the right. We are not going to use the lane balancer because we need to pres uh, we need to preserve what's on which side of the belt. 
And... We just need to... Split these like so. Not sure exactly where this is going to line up. Probably as close as possible. Okay. So this part tiles, right? I should have done this in the first place. If I get this part right and then copy paste it, that's all it's going to take. In fact, why don't I blueprint, snap to grid, relative. It seems to have included these tiles. That's why that offset looks weird. Just need to reduce the height by one. And that should connect nicely. Okay. Where did I put it? Delete that. Delete that. And we can put this probably as close as possible, honestly. I can always move the whole thing up or down a tile or two. So we're definitely not going to fit another one of these here. Uh, and this is the eight that I was predicting. And then we're going to... So we're going to have a few tiles to spare. And then we're going to put the other one here. Hmm. So if we have 32 of these machines, our throughput at max speed, our output throughput is 6 plus 5. That doesn't sound right. Oh, this isn't speed beacon, that's why. 14.48 uh, plus 14.18. Uh, so significantly less than one belt. So I think what I'll do is... I guess it's not going to save a whole lot of belt if I like bring it all together up here and... Yeah, no. Let's just do our usual standard pickup. Some chests. Those will line up the same as this. And I can actually just copy paste what we did over here. Albeit... We're going to be collecting junk data cards and bio sludge as opposed to contaminated bio sludge. That's just going to be a change in the station name, which doesn't actually functionally do anything with LTN. So that one's already complete. Uh, we need to merge and split our resources here. Since the whole thing's going to add up to less than a belt. I think we'll do it this way. So. Jump 
data cards on the left. Uh, these two can just... Like so. Oh. And we don't need this asymmetry anymore either. So I think I will get rid of that. Why don't I do it this way? I think I missed a spot. There we go. And then this one's already good. All right, let's get rid of these extra filter inserters. I'll just double check again. We're definitely not needing more than a filter inserter for that. Uh, we do need to output our bio sludge somewhere. I think we've got just about enough room to make that happen here. Let's see. That part's going to be a little bit messy. I just need to connect that in the middle somewhere. Something like this, perhaps. Hmm. Let's move this over a tile. Connect these up directly. How many tiles is that? One, two, three, four, five. That's the maximum. Those are not actually connected. Uh, where's the three B when I need one? Right about here. That's nice and consistent. And then underground belt goes here. So that is, oh, oh, bonus points. That connects like so. Cool. Uh, I don't suppose we can pull off the same trick over here. We cannot. That's already max length. That's already max length. Yeah. So unless I do it like this and then think of some other way to get our output where it's going. I could do this, I guess. Yeah, I actually like that. So max rate for the whole thing, 32 machines. If we go for speed modules, would only be 289 fluid per second. No stress there. Let's add a pipe. That actually lines up perfectly. And this one, in keeping with our theme, we'll do another 3B. That actually looks pretty good. Okay, and then let's line these up for the aesthetic of it. That should be fine. Don't miss this bit of belt. 
I think that's our build. We just need to move our beacons so that we get half of them with each beacon. Hombre, Tosta, Das, and Polvo. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, let's get our spiders over here. I think we will probably put some efficiency modules in this. Otherwise, it is 110. Wait, 110? Oh, it was like 200. 400 megawatts each or something, wasn't it? We're just missing some modules at the moment. Hey, hey. Uh, while our spiders go for a little walk, what the, while our spiders go for a little walk, let's set up our train stations. Uh, the product is called Neural Anomaly Data. Neural Anomaly Data goes here. Junk data cards and bio sludge goes here. That one's already set up. Do you also like oxygen not included? I do. In fact, I think a playthrough of that is what I want to do next on stream. Uh, after space exploration, I might, if not, take a break from Factorio, just maybe fewer Factorio hours per week. Um, I've never actually gotten past the mid-game of Oxygen Not Included, so uh, I wouldn't mind figure figuring that out. Okay. So we require uh, advanced neural gel processing unit and blank data card. Gel. Processing unit. Stacks to 100, right? Yep. I'll just request... Actually, how fast are we consuming it here? I can't really tell. Let's just go for like 1.5 train loads. 24,000. Should be way more than enough with how slow this is going to be. And blank data cards are significantly faster net consumption. Four times as much, actually. So we'll go like, well, probably the same amount, 24k. We're only setting it so high on the blue circuits because the request threshold is a full train load. So this will be three train loads. I'd be into Oni streams, nice, good to know, thank you. And let's name our station. Oops. All of the things that we'll be requesting. And switch it on. So that's it in theory, and I'm sure there's going to be something broken that we need to fix, or two, uh, but in theory we have completed all of the colourful space sciences, uh, Astro 4, Bio 4, Energy 4, and Material 4. And we're just waiting on some resources to get that to actually work. 
We've got blue circuits coming in. I'm not surprised we haven't had trouble with those for a long time. Or at least... What trouble we did have with blue circuits for a little while was resolved pretty easily. Blank data cards. Oh. Uh, copper plate is still a problem. That's right. I remember I messed up with the... What is going on here? Uh... I think, I think the right side loaders are broken. Why is that? Yeah, I'd actually updated the, um, uh, the Omni smelters to have output stations that are much faster. But apparently something's broken on all the ones that are on the right side, which I previously forgot to switch on. So let's see what's happening here. We're looking for copper plate. We're getting a signal of 16k copper plate here. We are removing the unwanted signals because we're going to do some each math. Because we don't know what resource we're going to be dealing with. So, negative a million on these signals, each greater than zero output each input count. We also get read train contents times negative one, so that gives us how much needs to be put into the train still. Is that... is that just a missing wire? I think it is. There we go. The amount that we still need to put into the train goes to each divided by 48 output each. Uh, what the? Oh. I seem to have missed copying the stack size as well. That's unfortunate. Um, I need to make sure that's going to have the wire connection. Okay, cool. So I'm pretty sure I just have to copy that. This one has it. Huh, okay. I think I worked on that one first and I probably copy-pasted it wrong. Well, before I get the construction spiders and or myself over there to place those combinators, these will at least load the train, albeit rather slowly. Stack size of 1 instead of 12 until the numbers get smaller. I'll just send myself over because speedy spider is speedy. And I will need to make sure I stop at each of these to get it placed, though. If I send the construction spiders, when they just walk by, it'll get those combinators placed. There is... I don't know if there's a danger that placing those combinators at the wrong time is going to cause a jam. But I don't think so. The inserters are all swinging in sync. And... Yeah, the, the inserters are swinging perfectly in sync, and we're just going to give it a larger stack size when this gets connected. So that should be fine, no matter when we put this combinator in. And stack size 230, which of course limits it to 12, because that's the highest stack size we can have. 
And so does continue to swing in sync. And stack size gets lower and lower. Once we get low enough, we just swing a couple of inserters per cargo wagon with a stack size of one. And we're done. And we don't have any inserters sticking out with random resources. So we can do that with as many different resources as we like. Fantastic. That should help with our copper throughput. I think I bumped up the priority on this one. I did not. I think I should. Priority 10. I've had enough of waiting for copper plate to get sent to orbit. Oh, and how much... Uh, I've actually got two stations for this, even. What was I gonna... What was I asking myself? How much... Something, something. Oh yeah, how many trains? Three trains at a time for each of these? That should be fine. Five trains on this one. Provide priority. Well, there's your problem. This was supposed to be request priority. That's why we didn't get a super high priority from that. Uh, so we should see trains bringing up a plate over here quite soon. I think they are already. The light just isn't going yellow. Yep. Okay. So hopefully that means we can actually get rid of... Oh, looks like we already did. I was going to say get rid of the, like, 100,000 copper plate. This one's 170k. And this one up here was the only one with the output stations set up correctly. And it's got practically zero copper plate right now. So I'm pretty sure... Now that we've patched those, we should see copper plate get where it needs to go. Yeah, a lot of these stations have like nine or ten train loads of copper plate waiting to go somewhere. Seems good. Uh, we're actually pretty close to launching this shuttle as well. And this one, not even close at all. Fantastic. Okay. And that'll be the last one of those. Nice. Let's go back to the mall for now. And I'll send the construction spiders back as well. I kind of want to do a new build for rough data storage substrates that doesn't have uh, literally 200 machines in each block and using the old beacons. It's a very simple recipe, two in, two out, 50% scrap. We're going to need really high throughput, though, with the scrap, I think. The current build does 180 iron plate in on each side. That's kind of a lot. I think in terms of just throughput for the space, this build is actually really, really good already. The only reason I would want to update this at all is UPS, which I wish was something we just didn't have to worry about. Uh, 
Oh, where's our spaceship? Out poster. I think it was number two. It has arrived, I think. Sand orbit. Fantastic. Uh, which is the higher priority? Sand orbit. Well, if I if I go to Sand orbit first, it's just gonna cost like two ion stream. Oh, our ship is here as well. Uh, do I actually need anything added to Sand orbit? Some more some more media defense installations. So that's a yes. without hesitation. I also want to add some more solar panels, perhaps. I don't know if we need it. I'll put this here for now. And we've already got some bots putting fast inserters that I didn't realize weren't there in place. Fantastic. So that'll be... The resources we need to start making delivery kind of capsules down here. Our spaceship has brought just as much um, explosives and iridium ingots that it should take to fill this up with copper core fragments. It'll also bring slightly more, unfortunately, because the bots will load extra into these chests. Um... That is less water than I would have expected there. That's actually a little bit of a worry. Oh, that's right. I needed to go to Angulus so I can reconfigure this. I'm going to need to send the outposter over there. But I don't think we're going to run out of heat too quickly. We're still at 9.8 thousand. So yeah, that should be fine. I'm more worried about the water. We need more solar panels. Uh, accumulator charge is increasing. It's... no. It's not increasing. <laughs> not when we fire the cannons. Okay, let's get some of this scaffolding placed. And we'll put our solar panel arrays up here somewhere, I think. Oh, I could do it over here. That's fine too. As long as we make sure we include uh, a pylon after we go. How about over here? We've already got the media defense installations. That brings our count up to 11. That's an odd number. No pun intended. Let's make it literally an even 12. Just need a little bit of scaffolding over here, I think. And once we're done building here, we need to go down to Sanj. Uh, whoops. To finish building our power plant. We've got a chronic shortage of uh, heat exchangers down here. Everything else... Well, most of everything else is built. Unfortunately, I did build the... Well, I kind of had to uh, build the refueling thing all the way over here. Unless I was going to pipe the crude oil a very long way. So this is where we need to land in order to refuel the ship so it can take off again. Did I just... Uh, why? This isn't even... Oh, it is connected. 
How did this happen? We've got Sanj DC chest. Explosives has to be greater than zero. Stack size one. I'm not using a fancy pulse circuit to make sure we send exactly one stack with each of these, but that's because we've got 40 stacks here, and we're only using 8 delivery cannons. So even if all of these fire 3 times each, uh, that's only 24 stacks. Yeah, there should be no danger. There should have been no danger of this happening. We're reading from the chest. Uh, we are allowing some extra... We're, we're aiming for two stacks of ingots and four stacks of explosives. That still leaves tons of room, even in the worst case scenario. And we're not actually using this circuit here. This just connects directly. Really not sure what happened there. Because we do have the red condition. We're not receiving a signal for explosives or iridium ingots right now. Sanj DC chest. Sanj DC chest. And this thing outputs if we're below a certain amount for each resource. Thank you for the follow Axel something. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I've seen these things queue up uh, effectively three recipes to send a stack. So that is 3, 6, 12, uh, 18 stacks. And that's in the absolute worst case scenario. That's still less than half of the chest. So I have no idea how that happened. I think I just realized as well I forgot to I forgot to bring delivery cannon. Yeah, I was going to go back here personally. Oh well. Uh, we don't actually need more delivery cannons to get the whole thing working. It's just going to be a bit slower until we fill this up with delivery cannons. Sand Orbit. And this goes here. This one goes on the left side. Why does that look like a different color? I think it is still the same one though. And that'll go there. Okay, did we lose anything? I don't think we lost anything that the spaceship isn't going to replace. So we can at least get it working before I go back there personally. Uh, seems the steam consumption has stopped. So we're not going to run out of water. Yeah, because the cannons aren't firing, of course. Alright, I guess we're just waiting on the bots to place all of that scaffolding. We'll check back here in a little while. But first... Oh, they didn't place this yet either. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure we just need that one little piece of scaffolding over there. All right, what are we doing in orbit? I could send outpost to number one with some delivery cannons, so I don't have to remember to go there myself. Or I could just head over there personally already. I think I'm going to ride out poster 1 if I do that anyway. I forgot to use the deconstruction spiders for a while. Let's send you back to the mall. Empty your inventory. Are there any intermediate builds that we need? What's this? Rough data storage substrates. How did these end up in the storage chest? Because we're too full here. Because if I'm going to set this so high, I have to have a couple of extra shuttles. Or at least one. How much do we have? 153,000? And the target is 160. Oh. Okay, let's add a single shuttle. Or maybe I should just set the request to like 153,000. This is easier at this point. I don't think having shuttles sit idle is going to be much of a UPS strain, right? Okay, brick shuttle. And brick shuttle. LDSS. Copy paste. Oh, that's that's not what I meant. Uh, rough data storage substrate. RDSS doesn't actually snap to them if we're already on the same surface. Let's just copy paste this so we get the settings. And this goes here, this goes here. RDSS shuttle three. And RDSS shuttle four. All right. So if there's any doubt that we have enough throughput for rough data storage substrates getting into space. Uh, that has just been shattered. Let's get rid of these wires that are spider webbed all over the place. I think that's almost all of them. Why can't I... There we go. I think that is it. Nice and clean. Did we not make shuttles for Vitalik Epoxy? We did. Uh, probably got the clamps wrong. 126. 126. 126. The other one is probably the same. 126. 26. Now this orbit. Was it here? No, that's Vitamelange. Four fragments. Vitamelange core fragments go here. Epoxy. Where were we dropping off epoxy? Uh, let's check. I see fish, fish, fish. Which means default, which means we're not using it. Uh, did I not actually set up the epoxy drop off? Or was that up here? No? 
Hello there, Revan. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I don't think... Uh, if I... If I double up on it, I'm going to have regrets, but we can always fix it. Okay. Uh, which other build used epoxy? It was this one. Which is why I wanted this right here. Whoops. The shortest possible route. This was going to be epoxy. So, stack size 50... Quest a full chest, even if we're limiting it for now. When epoxy equals zero, go back to Nalvis. Uh, it was 126, right? Yes, it was. And fantastic. But I think that's everything. It takes a it takes a lot fewer steps to set this up to configure this in the space side of things than it does on the ground. We should see a train coming for this. Uh, relatively soon. And we also need... Wait, how many things does epoxy go into? Uh, six whole recipes. We need it for Bioscience 4 directly. Uh, unit capsule. Lamel. Uh, also unit capsule. And decompression resistance data, which is this one. We need it for nanomaterial. And self-sealing gel. Both of these can only be made in space. May as well do that. Uh, let's see. Nanomaterial is six different things. Two fluids in, one fluid out. Uh, four physical in, two physical out if you count the occasional. A little bit of contaminated scrap. What does nanomaterial actually go into? Adaptive armor 5, and the high temperature heat exchanger, that I'm excited about. So let's get this build done. Where should we build it? Nano... Material. Oh, have I not researched it? A derp. Well, I can still start building it ahead of time, but it makes it a bit more difficult. We'll wait on this one. It only costs 250. Uh, mining productivity is really tempting, but it's 15,000. I would like to unlock at least something before I queue that up. Productivity, 8. That's a lot. It's very, very expensive as well. To actually make the things, even discounting the research, which is relatively cheap. Alright, let's queue up uh, nanomaterials. Sun. And... I guess if we have that research... We can do this research. Everything is just tier 4 colorful science packs. 16... Wait. A large 16 watt generator? I th oh, I, no, I misread it. Six, 
one gigawatt generator from just one turbine. That is something. That puts 500 degrees steam at the other end and outputs water at the sides. 99% energy efficient, 99% water conservation? Are we going to run this and use electric boilers to convert the colder steam back so we don't have to deal with that output? We'll see. This gives us 5,000 degrees steam. 562 per second. Well, whatever. Let's uh, queue it all up. Quite excited about that one. Okay, I think I am going to take a short break. Uh, now that we've got our epoxy. And hopefully now that we've got our copper plate coming in. I might actually need another pickup station for copper plate in this place. I mean, we've got 48 stack inserters. And we do allow three trains to queue up at the same time for this. Maybe this is enough? Yeah, I don't think it's... I don't think the rail itself is enough of a bottleneck to cause problems with that. At least not until we really ramp things up. Possibly. Cool. So blank data card. Uh, just shot up to... 5,000 per minute. Or to put it another way, I'm pretty sure full throughput of 83.2 per second. Very, very nice. Remains to be seen how long we can keep that up. Copper plate in the last minute. Consumption... Consumption hasn't increased as much as I imagined. Uh, so in the last minute, we are consuming 10k per minute faster than we're producing it. Wow. That's kind of alarming. Oh, we're producing it faster all of a sudden as well. 55k per minute. Oh, it's as this part of the graph gets closer to being off the edge of the, uh... Yeah, we're actually producing almost as much copper plate as we're consuming. And it just crossed over. So, we can probably keep up with this. And that's not even taking into account that, theoretically, this will saturate eventually. That's a good sight to see. I know better intellectually than to feel like it's impossible to keep up with blank data cards, period. Because I've seen certain resources be the bottleneck and then become totally saturated. But there's something visceral about it, especially when... Blank data cards is the thing that we've been short on more often than anything else in the whole of the orbital base. What was that other thing that I needed to build in space that was maybe not behind a research wall right now? 
heavy assembly we can make on the ground. And I'm blanking on whatever... Oh, I think it was something that uses Vitalik Epoxy. Whoops. I don't know why FNEI has gotten slow. But here we are. Uh, no, that's not it. Unit capsules? I'm not too interested in that. That's in a growth facility anyway. Maybe I'll make some just for, for, for laughs. Oh, that's right. Self-healing, self-sealing gel. I think we have this. Self-sealing gel. Reagent, epoxy, and cryonite rod. Very simple recipe. We do not have self-sealing gel yet. It's right here. It only costs 400. Maybe I'll do that first. And what does this take? Oh, I thought this would need deep space science or something. Adaptive Armor Mark V. Why not? I recommend the recipe book mods. Similar to FNEI, but with better UI. I can give it a look. Asanda Nima. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, I am going to take a short break. Let's throw on LTN screensaver. Uh... And something something sponsors. Back in a few minutes.
Okay. Let's continue, shall we? Back to the mall. Um, let's check on the outposter. We've got our scaffold. Whoops. Okay. We've got our scaffolding. Let's put in some solar panels. This wasn't placed properly. And that should probably be more than enough to run these delivery cannons. Uh, we also need to... I'll do this after I do the stuff on planet, because we're not about to run out of heat for our ship right now. In fact, considering that this thing got here with more than 9,876 degrees of temperature, um, degrees Celsius, that was after the interstellar voyage all the way from Nalvis orbit. Or from Nalvis, actually. Uh, I'm seriously questioning the need to... Uh, to run energy beams into these ships at the pickup stations. I definitely don't want the condenser turbines on the ships running when they do get there. Although I suppose... So it's not running right now because we've got ample solar power, but if it lands on Morpheus... Oh, well that's not a problem. Morpheus can resupply the water. Yeah, no, that's totally fine. So I think I will point an energy beam at this spot for when we get uh, the new types of ships picking up from here. I'm not liking the fact that this is completely full. It's giving me the feeling that our Morpheus ships are not working. Morpheus. I think... Wasn't it the Morpheus ships that I deliberately stopped? Possibly. Morpheus 6 is totally empty. Yeah, I got rid of the signal to take off to go back for more. So I wanted to... Oh, that's a lot of ion. Uh, I wanted to update these to be the Space Truck Mark IIs. But I can't exactly just swap stuff out, not entirely. I need to pump out the Ion Stream. We should have room to store it. How much is here? Uh, 100,000. Hmm, there's just enough room, actually. And for only one ship. And liquid rocket fuel is a similar problem, but there's always enough room for that here. Well, I might just have to add some more storage containers or something. Uh, let's pump out the... Oh, that's even less convenient. Uh, let's pump out the fuel. And then we're going to remove most of this. Uh, I don't think we have... Oh, that's right, I'm on this planet. I think I have some energy beam receivers that I brought here. Apparently not. How do we make them? 
We need superconductive cable. We only have that in orbit. Uh, did I put it in my little shuttle? Where did I put my little shuttle? Where did I land early? Here it is. Uh, we do. We have three energy beam receivers. Okay, cool. So we can make three of the new spaceships. Also, well, make it two because I need to put some stuff up here. Let's get our spider gang over here to place the rest of this stuff. Except for the beam receiver. The fuel won't pump out. There was one way pumps further back. Uh, yeah, that's true. Kind of forgot about that for a second. Uh, let's see. This, I think for Ion Stream, it might all just be one big connection. No, it goes over here as well. Okay. So that is draining. Liquid rocket fuel we need to send back into here. And I'm pretty sure this liquid rocket fuel is separate from this liquid rocket fuel. At least, uh, there's a connection down here, but not up here. Yeah, that should be fine. Uh, good catch, Sindrin. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I think we do have pretty copious storage of beryllium. I, no, I could be totally wrong about that. Why don't you drop this off for now? And then... Where did... Oh, there we go. Outposter... Okay, so I think, I think we're done up here. Right? We've got 11 cannons, make it 12. We've only got the barest beginnings of filling this ship with copper core fragments. Unfortunate. Uh, we do still have way more ion than we need in these ships, and I'd prefer to keep it that way. Let's land on Sanj. Should only take a few seconds to get there. Ten to go. Oh, a chunky asteroid. But I don't think we're even going to have to shoot it down. I... Yeah, no. Alright, can I line this up correctly? Let's see. Uh, from the bottom of this thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, is our underground pipe for liquid rocket fuel. One, two, Three, four, five, six. That should be it, I think. Fantastic. And away go the bots. All right, I need to keep an eye on this. Um, well, first of all, I need to actually add some stuff in so that the bots will... 
trying to repair it. We're going to need a... We might need a recharge station somewhere. How about here? And I think what I'll do is, until that's fixed, we're just going to turn these inserters away from the belt. So we're not going to have any more accidents until we're ready to mess around with that. Hey, RF Holloway. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's swap this out. Oh. Uh, whoops. I kind of forgot. Oh well. It's fine. Let's grab our energy beam receivers. And prod modules. I might just shove that in there for now. And bring the receiver over here. We've built everything else. Fantastic. Spiders, back to the mall, please. And deconstruction spiders. I'll get you to... to do what, actually? I know we've got a build or two over here somewhere we want to defunct. Uh, putting fluids in barrels so that we could put them in cargo rockets, definitely something I want to get rid of. But I don't know if anything's particularly dependent on it just for now. This is where we wanted to delete some old stuff. Alex Hudson, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think I may have said that earlier today, but it's fine, is what I will claim. You could leave a docking clamp down there to make future landings easier. I could, but that would be admitting that I'm going to need to make future landings here because I made more mistakes. And that could never possibly happen. Never in seven minutes. Nope. Bots are bringing more stuff. Fantastic. Extra points for welcoming a viewer more than once per day. <laughs> nice. Alright, so this... Uh, this will be 2.4 gigawatts once it's finished. Um, maximum number... Well, there isn't really a maximum, but... With the blueprint that I stamped down here. Uh, 4, 12... No, 4, 8, 12. Yeah. 24 coal miners would be... Uh, half of that. And then we need the excess power for the delivery cannons, which is actually going to add up to quite a lot. I do have, assist I do have some power management in place. In case we're using too much power, we stop coal mining. Um. Hmm. The robots are not upgrading these. 
Did I mark it with the wrong upgrade planner? I don't think so. Yeah, radar construction pylon. It's got these little ear things sticking out. It should look exactly the same if I do this again. And we do have those in storage. Radar construction pylon. I, I'm not accidentally giving it construction pylon as an upgrade planner. Uh, how many construction butts have we got? 230. That's relatively a lot, but they're going a long distance. And they've got a lot of jobs to do. How many ghosts do we have here? Uh, a bit over 200? So it shouldn't be too much longer before they're done. Oh. I'll give that some time. Uh, here is our third power plant. Calidus. These two are kind of balanced. Not. Six and ten. This is four gigawatts, four gigawatts. That's going to Pentium. Those two are fine. I need to send a construction ship back to Calidus orbit. Glad I didn't send this one somewhere else prematurely. So let's send you to Calid. Do you have scaffolding? Yeah, you've got scaffolding. In fact, you could probably stand to carry a lot more scaffolding. It's a short trip anyway. Calidus orbit. Fantastic. Star probe data is going to take about 600 years to fill an automatic delivery. We're waiting on asteroid belt probes, for example. Wait, what? Hold on. What? Hold on. Asteroid belt probe. Um, pretty sure that's supposed to say star probe. And the one in the asteroid belt should indeed say asteroid belt probe. How did we even get star data, star probe data, if I made that mistake? I must have copy-pasted over this later on. And we haven't actually had a delivery, or an automated delivery for um, star probes. Because the number of those that we carry in one of these little shuttles is a lot. That's fine. Uh, so you are... Solar Probe Rocket 1. Star Probe Data 1. That's the final product. Okay. And then I need to wait for the construction ship to get to Calidus orbit to power this thing up. It is a little bit unfortunate. Um, 
I can't put like five gigawatts into a pair of energy beam transmitters and split them evenly and do two of these. Um, or at least if I can, it's oddly tricky. We, we got like four gigawatts and four gigawatts here. Maybe what I need to do is build the energy beam emitters first and then place the injectors. That might do the trick. This is six and this is ten. Do we have any logistic storage here? That's a buffer chest. Uh, I'm tempted. Let's get our construction bots to pick these up temporarily. Okay, so those are now both zero gigawatts. We're going to add the energy beam injectors. And they seem to be out of sync with how much power they've got. But at the very least, it's going to be a lot more balanced than it was before. That's the theory anyway. Can I do the same thing? I don't think so. At Angelus, I don't think we have some robots here. Uh, we do. We have almost 50 construction bots. So this is energizing. Yeah, these are all just going to energize. There's no glaives or anything. So I'm going to do a deconstruction planner. We're going to pick up energy beam injectors. And then as soon as I hit undo, the bots should place all of these again. I don't know if it matters if they would be in sync or not. But now we've got zero injectors in this whole thing. Um, all of these are set to zero gigawatts. And we're going to give them the injectors back at the same time. 0.55. Oh, these two don't have a target. They're switched off. If I... Hmm. Let's try that again. I'm going to pick up all of these. I'm going to leave these ones as they are. So this is aimed at Morpheus. Uh, this will also be aimed at Morpheus, but it'll be where this beam receiver is going to be. Just a little bit. Well, it could be exactly between where the uh, clamps are, but a little bit higher, I think. Okay. And then... This one is Sanj. This one will be Sanj Orbit. And we're going to aim at this one. This seems totally unnecessary, but may as well. And we're going to place the injectors again. This one's still going to be on zero gigawatts because it doesn't have a target. Hmm. And this, these two are significantly different. And this one's at zero gigawatts. Uh, I'll leave it running for a bit to see if that changes, but 
I suspect I do need to make separate cells for all these. Which is a shame because we're going to have a lot of excess power wasted. It just need, means we need more solar panels. It's not that big of a deal. But still, to have, like... We need one gigawatt for each emitter. That's fine. A hundred... Uh... Wait, what? Max consumption, a hundred megawatts. That's a lot. I thought it was like... 100 kilowatts or something. Zero watts. How does... Energy beam chamber actually work? Is the 100 megawatt a bottleneck? Uh... Beam. I'm pretty sure these are one gigawatt each. How many do we have? Eleven. Eleven gigawatts, yeah. So, I don't think we're bottlenecking at a hundred megawatts on the beam chambers. I just have this feeling that that's the case. Or not the case. Yeah, this one's still getting zero, even though it's connected, just like these ones are, symmetrically. I guess I could... I can't pick a dolly to these things, but I could have the bots rearrange them. Okay, I guess we'll swap that back to where it was. Yeah, so I think the ones that are going to be energizing the spaceships will just have one beam injector. And then we'll have to have three for the 2.4 gigawatts uh, for the power plants. Which is pretty damn wasteful, but what can you do? Uh, what am I doing here? There's a lot of stuff I want a productivity bonus. Do we still have enough? Uh, it would seem so. It seems we have more than enough um, capacity to deal with our vanilla core fragments. Oh. Oh. Wait, what? Why does that say provide threshold? That's surprising. It should be... Oh no, it is a provide threshold. We need to get rid of the crude oil. Wait, did I never connect that? No, it's full. Um... This is half full. Okay, cool. So we are emptying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's correct. Provide threshold 100k, provide priority very high. To get rid of the crude oil. Request threshold. Stack threshold. Okay. Uh, if we've still got these old blocks. Oh, I actually turned them off. I was going to make priority changes, but this is even better. Yeah. Uh, it's past time to get rid of those. Let's get our construction spiders to pay this area a visit. Oh, that's right. I was going to deconstruct this stuff as well. Let's do that first. It's not like those solar panels need maintenance. Yeah, that's true. And from what I understand, the UPS impact of solar panels is practically zero.
we've also we're also way past the point where we spam out tier two flat solar panels like they're nothing. Uh oh. There we go. All right, that should just about do it. How's our fluid? I think all of our fluid ships are still working just fine. You are very, very low on heavy oil. Were you supposed to take it to Nalvis orbit? Or I think you're supposed to bring it here, actually. Uh, yeah, the pump is facing the other way. So how empty, just how empty do you have to be to take off? Oh, I switched this off. Why did I do that? Hold on. Where's our heavy oil in Nalvis orbit? This is looking a bit full. Uh, heavy, or heavy oil in orbit is kind of a waste product, except that we're also, we've got coal liquefaction here. Um, but I want to get away from that. Because there's no productivity bonuses for it. Liquid rocket fuel. You're just not low enough on liquid rocket fuel to take off yet? Wait, what? I thought I... It's animating, but it says it's pumping zero per second. When liquid rocket fuel is less than 1,000 in this one tank, it'll launch. I may have been a bit too aggressive with that setting. Just a little bit. Well, we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I don't remember why heavy oil was stopped. This is backwards, I think. If he if what are we reading here? I think this was supposed to check for liquid rocket fuel, not heavy oil, because we're dropping it off here. I don't know. Let's just say if heavy oil less than some number. Currently it's down to two in here, Lamau. If heavy oil in that one tank is less than, let's say, 10, go to Nalvis orbit. Fantastic. Uh, where are we? That's right. Wanted to. I'm just going to bring myself over here so I don't get all of this stuff shoved in my inventory. Let's get the construction spiders to pick up this old stuff. Not too worried about losing a little crude at this point. That is a lot of random resources though. This might be a bit of a pain. Pipe. 
Okay, I think we're about ready to issue this order. Copy paste that. Put it in here. Is this even necessary at this point? I mean, I keep finding empty chests for vanilla core fragments. I think we could probably... Oh. Okay, that part I can do right now. Let's go... Tier 6 modules. Productivity. In all of these... Pulverizers. That gives us more iron, copper, stone, coal, etc. And that means we don't have any prod 3s doing the vanilla core fragments anymore. So it seems like we have way more capacity than we need to deal with core fr uh, vanilla core fragments at the moment. Which is nice. I thought I would have to build another block or two. But it's been doing just fine with these ones completely removed in the equation for a while now. Oh, I may have forgotten. Nope, I'm fine. The electric boilers. Okay. Some of this is in a bot network or two, so that's going to sort itself out for us. Very nice. There. Fantastic. Uh, what else do I need to prod? Did I not prod all of these yet? I did. Let's just double check. Uh, those are prod th Part threes. Let's do that. Iridium powder. It's gonna get the prod six treatment. Just wanna roll this over everything but the beacons. And I think this one we already upgraded. Holmium. Fantastic. Oh, and we were slowly swapping out... Draining the fuel here so that we can deconstruct all this stuff. Are we actually full here? We are. Yikes. Okay. Uh, in that case... Could we actually take advantage of this? I think so. Hmm. I think I need to build a block to retire old ships. Because we need to do this like seven more times just for Morpheus. And we, uh, we're running out of places to put the uh, fluid that we're draining here.
I will just deconstruct all of that. So, so that there's going to be no mistakes. Maybe I shouldn't be so hung up on preserving the liquid rocket fuel. It was scarce for a long time, but now it is completely saturated. Uh, almost everything in the game is at this point. So yeah, maybe I should just not worry. It feels weird, but maybe I shouldn't worry about saving like 400,000 liquid rocket fuel. And that's a lot of work for our bots to do. Kind of hard to see what I'm deconstructing. The amazing cauliflower. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And I'm not going to be able to build our ship just yet, because as soon, the very moment that this space isn't taken up, uh, another spaceship is going to land here. I might have to deconstruct the spaceship floor before that happens. Lumi, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Uh, where is my player character? Did... Oh, those... Yeah, 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 these uh, Axian Ion Beads. Exchange Beads. I thought those were little blue triangles saying we need prod modules for a second there. But I think we already placed them all. Cool. So that is... All three of our main exotic resources uh, that we have to turn into powder uh, at tier 6 productivity modules. I need to do a block for Naquitite, although we need to actually mine it first. The ingots we've already got sorted out in the Omni smelters. Uh, plate is really basic. Vitalic Acid, Washed Naquitite. Uh, the Crushing needs water, and also produces stone. How's our orbital stuff doing? Still not enough blank data cards. Are we still churning them out? Yes, we are. At a rate of, what was it, 83? 83 per second. Shouldn't be that much longer before everything's saturated with the blank data cards. There's probably a lot of catching up to do, though. Let's check in on this build. Our... Energy beam receiver is complete. Fantastic. Power. Did we pick this up? We did. Okay. Why do we have no assembly machine threes? Oh no. There's no assembly machine threes in this thing, is there? Okay. I think that's what I'll do next. I'll personally go with my assembly machines that I'm carrying. Not to mention delivery cannons. Uh, let's update my... request for cannons. How many do we need? I doubt if we're ever going to lose some... 
over here. Uh, we're looking for another... 18 cannons? So I'm actually carrying enough to get the job done already. Alright, let's drop off. I'll stop requesting rod modules for the moment. Where's my spaceship? Is it still holding a bunch of rods? No. I think we'll be okay there. Uh, let's just drop that request down to 50 for now. Seems good. Okay, so 20 delivery cannons, a bunch of assembly machine threes. Is there anything else that I should have taken here before? And can I perhaps... I could get this thing at least functional if I just swap some of these assembly machines. I don't have anywhere else, do I? That I threw some assembly... <gasps> I do! One, two, three. And we're missing one, two, three, four. Rip. If only I'd... If only I'd thrown down one more random assembly machine over here before. Uh, but I'll take it. That will at least be functional for now. Can you share your save with us? I would like to view some of your circuits in detail. Uh, I suppose. I don't know where I'm going to host a half a gig save file. Um, I'll have to figure something out with that. Uh, we need some... Pr no, it's actually speed modules, so we're not losing productivity bonuses here. That's good. I should also have prod sixed these. Oh, no. Productivity plus 32%. That's a problem. Uh, how much is this? 4, 8, 12, 24. Okay. I'm going to head over there immediately because I actually calculated how much iridium ingot we need to bring over there per delivery based on productivity modules at tier 6 so oh also if you're looking for blueprints uh, the discord and blueprints that I've uploaded. You can see some of that stuff there. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to head over with my player character to get those assembly machines, productivity six modules, uh, and delivery cannons sorted out. But we do have some delivery cannon capsules being made, at least. There are free sites where you can upload massive files that stay for a week or so. You could upload it and share the link. Sounds good. Are these actually getting delivered? They are. Share big files. Okay, and finally we have some copper core fragments uh, being offered to our spaceship. It's not going to be enough to fill it up, 
because the iridium ingots that I calculated that we needed to bring were based on tier 6 modules. Um, okay, so we should... I'm kind of scared. We should be able to turn these on now. Let's see. Sand DC chest. Input signals, explosives, iridium ingots. If we have... If we're missing 40 ingots or 200 explosives. I mean, if we have less than that, basically. It's like off by one, but that's basically it. Uh, if we drop below 200 explosives, 40 ingots, we send a request for more. So that is... Uh, six stacks. And we're going to be getting, like, three per machine before it stops firing, because the inserter is going to put in... It, let, I think it's going to put in two more, maybe one more, delivery cannon capsule. But worst case, let's say it's three, or even four. We have 16, 20, 24 stacks. That'll get added to our six. So that is uh, only 30 stacks out of 40. There should be no way this overfills. But it did earlier. I don't know why. It might have been something to do with the initial condition where this is all empty. I don't... I'm not sure. I think it was... No, I don't know. Okay. Um, so I need to take this ship. It's already full with fuel. Where is that bot going? Uh, I don't think we need this beacon sitting here, just literally doing nothing. So we could probably upgrade... Do we even need to? Yeah, we, we will. Uh, we need to tier 6 module this. The speed. And I may as well, while I'm at it, mark this for upgrade. Uh, how much power do we have right now? A lot. Yeah, we should already have more than enough power for all the drills that we've made room for. The bottleneck, if any, now that we've got our power plant up and running, will actually be the delivery cannons recharging, power-wise, but also speed-wise. Once we get the rest of these delivery cannons here, we might need another plant. Okay, uh, let's get in our ship, pick up the spooder, back to Nervous Orbit. And I don't actually have a ship to ride there at the moment, um, because... Both of the construction ships are away, but one of them's just at Calidus Orbit. 
Not that one. Not poster. This one. Anchor. And what were we here to build? I know I needed to reconfigure the energy beamers. Was there anything else? We only need 2.4 gigawatts uh, for each of these. So let's try... This is 10 and 6. Didn't I try this earlier? If I reduce this to 5... Just doing an experiment. I think was more solar and beams. 0 0.40, 0 0.40, 0 0.630, 0 0.850. This is even worse than it was before. Okay. I see how it is. Uh, let's get... Three of these for the ones that are aimed at our energy beam receivers. This one, I think, is aimed at the other one. Fantastic. One, two, three. There's no storage. Let's figure that out in a moment. How about this, actually? And we need one more. If we can squeeze it in somewhere. Other chambers can be connected to the end or middle of either side. Energy beam injectors can be connected on the sides only. Okay. So we can't do what I was hoping to over here. Uh, I could probably move this pylon substation. One, two, three. And this one's going to be over here. Temperature is already rising. Fantastic. So all of these should just stop. Oh. Oh, it's still climbing. I thought it stopped at 2.44, which is just enough. I thought it was because of the transmission efficiency going down. 62.28% uh, times 3 gigawatts. Is 1.87. We actually need four for each of these and we can just barely fit it without changing anything that's actually a surprisingly good ratio at least it'll be different in another solar system with a different uh <laughs> 19 gigawatts. Wait. This one... Hold on. I think this is because it's accumulated power while there's no spaceship there. That's probably it. Nervous. I wanted to... Was it this one? Yeah, it was this one. Sanj DC, orbit DC chests. Okay. Uh, 
I don't think we really need six of these. Just to energize a newly built spaceship. So we'll get rid of that for now. Honestly, as long as they get more than zero, it's enough to energize the spaceships, I think. So maybe we can get get away with connecting two of these together. It depends if one of them is going to be stuck at zero for some reason. I don't particularly like the idea of having to randomly play around with these. For that. Zero gigawatts. Hmm. It's not gonna... I'm pretty sure we've made these symmetrical before. It's not gonna give power evenly if we make this symmetrical, right? No, it's all going to the one on the left. Okay. Um, can I make room for this a bit better? Well, we've got scaffolding anyway, so I can do what I like. With all of that. But still... I might just move this up a few tiles, actually. Oh, that's going to connect. I don't want it to connect. Is that going to fit? No. Why don't we do that again? So this is Elvis, Energize, right about here. I guess if we've got excess power here, we may as well use more of it if we're not doing anything else. 3.99 gigawatts. Oh, right. Energy transmission efficiency. 62.28. 2.49. Yeah. That's perfect. Alright, so we have one, two, three energy beam receivers on Nalvis. We've got for the moment, way more power than we need on this planet. Uh, that's during the day, though. Nighttime. Steam turbines. Oh, right. We're pretty much doing everything we need to just with flat solar panels on Nalvis at the moment. So this is Probably just keeping nuclear fuel from having to be spent, or... Anyway, we've got three aimed at Nalvis. We've got two aimed at Penium. Which is having no trouble at all. And I th think that's it so far in the solar system. I think that's all I wanted to fix for now. But why don't I... While I'm here, I'll just set up 
another... transmitter or two. That's a decent pattern. If I put these close together, it doesn't do anything weird, does it? That's actually a much better pattern than I was hoping for. And I feel like this looks a little bit better. Should also give us room for a substation. It do. So this one's aimed here, this one's aimed at Elvis. Seems good. Let's send this back to Nalvis Orbit for now. We've got, yeah, we've got tons of power. This is our main, uh, I wouldn't exactly call it Dyson Swarm or anything, but that's the basic idea. Nervous Orbit, back you go. Fantastic. And I'll take these prods. Um, and get ready to get going. Slow rocket. Oh, we've got like one jetpack, that's why. Alright. I'll just sit in my spider until then. Now then. Uh, why don't we have this fluid? Because we don't have significant biomass or bioelectrical data. We don't have... Oh, we do have significant biomass. I mean, it's happening, at least. Fantastic. Uh, and what was the other thing? If we've got significant biomass, that means blank data cards got there. Although that's with, like, super high priority for... Where was it? Uh, for this build. I'm just gonna move this. Experimental genetic data. Because what I'm realizing is I keep, I kept looking for this on the map and it didn't exist. That's gonna be much easier to find. So we've got experimental genetic data happening, obviously. Uh, blank data cards are being accumulated. Fantastic. Alright. What else do we have in mind? We're fixing the new outpost. We're deleting old spaceships. Uh, we need to build some more new spaceships. So... Space exploration... Where is it? Space Truck Mark II. One of the nice things about having this design where the logic happens on the outside of the ship is we don't have to... We don't have to fiddle with the combinators after building this or have separate... Uh, separate blueprints for the same spaceship going to different places. Same goes for setting the requests on the buffer chests as opposed to having to set those manually. Alright, so what... I think of... Oh, that's wrong. 
I think I remember what I set this to. Where is it? Oh, it's the Sand ship. Sand one. That number. Paste, paste. And I'll just double check on Nalvis. We've got that number set up as well. We do. Okay. Once we've got some... Well, we don't even need to wait for the liquid rocket fuel. I just need to wait for the ion. Which we are getting on the ground as well. Yeah, I'm just going to send this already. Now this. Why is launch disabled? Checking console. Valid ship passed. Fantastic. And... I was going to say let's make another one. But I haven't really got a feel for just how long it takes to fill one of these. Um, so we might only need like two or three for each of our outposts. Uh, our maximum is 144,000 ore fragments that'll be in this ship. Uh... I've also got this thing set to automatically bring back so-called trash. 144,000... If this stuff is going at full speed... Well, actually, how fast is full speed here? 156 per second. Okay. So we're looking at 923 seconds, or 15... About 15 minutes, 20 seconds. Unless I put more core mining drills, which it absolutely is not a problem to do, but then we would need even more... even more throughput of delivery cannon capsules and their ingredients. Uh, but yeah, how long did I just say? Like 15 minutes? Let me just recalculate that real quick. 156 per second. 923 seconds. 15 minutes and something like 22 seconds. So if it takes a quarter of an hour or so just to fill up one of those ships, even though we're core mining really fast. Why is this blocked? Oh. Because we're not taking from the belt even. That's fine, I guess. It's probably taking a while. Oh, there's no logistic bots here? There's zero logistic bots in this network. So it's only this inserter that's getting the iridium plate. Okay. It's going to take a while to see results on that. Where's our ship? Our poster is... 55 seconds out from Nalvis orbit. Fantastic. We're not going to see Bio 4, even if we have finished it with no mistakes. It's going to take some time. Why do we not have... I think I know the answer. Vitamolange core fragments. Oh, okay. Is that full? What? Yeah, I think this is full. 76,000... 
790 or more. We've got 72,000. I may have miscalculated. Oh, no, this chest. This chest is missing a request. That's the whole reason. And this goes here. Okay, so Vita CF Shuttle 1 and 2. We should see this thing taking off just as soon as this chest is full. Do you have a link to your blueprints? Indeed. There it is. Uh, I don't have every blueprint I've ever made up there, but there's quite a lot of stuff. Thanks, you are the bestest. No worries. You're welcome. TC Bonnie. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And... Spaceship... Go... Launch? Spaceship go launch. And in a matter of seconds... Uh, we should see it land at Nalvis Orbit. Got a couple of laser turrets on these things, but I don't think they ever actually fire. Oh, wait, here we go. But would they have needed to fire? Because I think... Yeah, no, they would have actually taken damage. Okay, two seconds, and land, and bots pick up core fragments, core fragments go into rail network, train get core fragments, science 4 can happen, why do we not have Vitalik epoxy yet? Oh, we do. Did I... Oh, there's like one piece of belt missing here. I probably deliberately disconnected that at some point. For some reason. Just to make sure I set this up correctly before I connect it or something. Let's send our spiders back down there to fix that. So we've got Vitalik Epoxy... Core fragments. Um, we don't have tier 3 catalog either. What's happening with tier 3 catalog? We are missing bioelectric data. I believe we're missing that for another build as well. Bioelectric data is actually happening right now. It was just... Blank data cards, basically. Cool. How much have we got here? 2.8k? It's going to be a while. Uh, so that might be everything in place for tier 4 bio. Oh, I should take this opportunity to... Yeah, this is actually a really good time to do this. Um, get rid of this. And we need to... We need to put these different resources in different chests. I'll disconnect this. Actually, I'll leave that there for now. Yeah, let me just block the belt until we're ready. I'm going to put this here temporarily. 
And we're going to connect that like so. Where are our spiders? They are coming. They'll be here shortly. Alright, is this part connected? Yeah, that looks good. Get a melange go burn. Train go pick up. There's only one place. Whoop. There's only one place that could be going. So what is involved for... Oh, I can't even look at it yet. Where do I research this? Uh, Deep Space Science Pack 1. We need Naquium Plate. Significant data. Deep Space Catalog. Uh, advanced neural gel we've got, significant data of course we've got, Naquium plate is pretty straightforward once we have Naquium, and what goes into the catalog? Oh, I can research this, yeah let's do that. Well, I, uh, once I have bio 4 I can research this, it takes a thousand. Nano engineering data, Naquium energy data, Naquium structural data, interstellar void probe data. So for the first tier of deep space science, we're going to have to be launching probes from deep space, I imagine. And we need neural supercomputers to even make a start. That reminds me, um, we can already do it, but it's really expensive, but it would probably be really worthwhile. Uh, where's our junk data card build? It's here. Um, I think we can already make neural supercomputers. A hundred, a thousand processing units, a hundred superconductive cable, and a hundred of that bioelectric data that we don't have. And also advanced neural gel, which means we can't just make it in the mall super easily. That's a pretty big pain, but on the other hand, it'll get our blank data card recycling from 80% up to 90%, which is uh, from junk data cards, which is not trivial even a little bit, especially with the sheer amount of data cards that we're going through. I was... wait, do we not have beacons here? Yeah, we don't have beacons here. Okay, I think we'll just leave this as it is. Uh, it's rated to go relatively close to saturating this belt already. I think we'll get those computers built and put some beacons down. Crafting speed 4, so it's twice as fast as these ones and we're not using beacons here yet. And the speed of these individual machines is quite slow. So we're going to be able to do... Oh, we also probably maybe... I can't actually see. We went from two modules to four that could fit in the second tier of computers. I don't suppose we're going to be able to fit more with the next tier up. Because if we can, that further reduces the number of these machines we actually need. Um, okay, we actually do have all of these things. I might see if I can squeeze it into the mall. Oh, 
There's that blue science that I forgot about. Wait, I'm still in orbit, right? Oh, but I need to get going. Nope, we're doing this first. I'm just gonna... manually pick up this uh, astro science and deliver it to the labs because I do not like the idea of that sitting in the mall until the end of time. I need to make some room. It's not going to be difficult. Oh. Yeah, by all means, take my prod threes. And the flat solar panels will get where they need to go eventually. By eventually, I mean pretty soon, actually. Come to think of it, there's a lot of room for solar panels here. Maybe I should have put them down. We've got plenty of power up here, it's fine. Okay. Don't fill my inventory with stuff. We're gonna take all of this, if we can. Which we cannot. And I'll take that. Oh, there's more. Oh, no. Um, how much more astrocytes is coming? Jeez. It's actually quite a lot. Take away my pipes, please. Oh, I didn't mean to put them in that chest. Uh, that's fine, actually. Let's head down to the labs. Mark this for deconstruction. And then... What machine makes this? Space Manufactory? Uh, we actually have room for a station right here. I might just be lazy and set this up like so. Let's turn that off. We're looking for advanced neural gel, right? Computer tier three. And we need some bioelectric data. Bioelectric. Advanced neural gel. Just a little bit from a short train. I'll just double check that the short train will be able to pick it up. Uh, that's a no. Hmm. This is for, what, junk data cards? 11.5. Um... Oh no, this is fine actually. The provide stack threshold. Well, no, I think once all of this fills up, it could still summon a short train. That's fine, I guess. Alright, when do we actually get advanced neural gel? When we get a lot more blank data cards going into these things. But at least it is in motion. How many have we made lately? Significant. Uh, so there's our zero that we were making previously. Uh, and all of a sudden we're making 472 per minute 
ish. There's a certain pattern to it, but that's the average. It's stopped. Train is already coming with the experimental biomass. Train limit three. What about this one? Does this have a train limit? This has a train limit of one. Uh, we're not even. Yeah, no. Let's let's not limit this. Why should we? If I was allowing short trains to pick this up, it would make sense, but I actually want as much of this stored as possible. Quick question, you aren't using LTN train stations for the kind of stations you were building a minute ago, aren't you? Just normal ones? Uh, what do you mean by that? The kind of stations you were building a minute ago, as in, in the mall? Over here. Oh, wait. Let me just... Let me just get rid of this. There we go. Uh, so in the mall over here, I need a custom build to make uh, neural supercomputers because it's using a different fluid. So I'm not going to be using the auto crafter for that. Um, so I'm getting some fluid dropped off for advanced neural gel and the rest is going to come from the robot network. Just set up a train station with the pumps. Was that a normal vanilla station? Uh, no, it's not a vanilla station. It's got the the stuff here, and we're not requesting anything except for advanced neural gel. Request threshold can be twenty five k. And short trains only. That should be fine. Okay, thanks. No worries. I do use some vanilla uh, trains. In this playthrough, I use it for trash pickup. Because we want trains to just pick up items if there's anything there to be picked up in that use case. As opposed to having to have a requester station requesting something specific. Blank data cards are still in motion at full speed and it is glorious. I could almost believe we're going to meet demand one day. Especially after we start recycling them with 90% efficiency. Alright, so what are we missing here? Superconductive cable. I don't think that's going to be as difficult as bioelectric data for a while. Superconductive cable is actually broken because oh no you're joking negative 10 degree thermo fluid i thought i made a massive i did negative 10 degrees negative 10 degrees okay and i'll just check all of these are connected 222k it would appear this is all the one fluid network. So we're not making superconductive cable because our negative 10 degree thermofluid output is having a bad time. Uh, 
probably because I set the provide. It's not the provide threshold, actually. Request threshold is probably 100k up here. And it really doesn't need to be for our storage. Let's make sure we've done the same thing over here. So we can get as little as 25k delivered at a time. So we should already have a train coming for this thermofluid, or perhaps not. Um, yeah, I haven't come up with a solution that I like to be able to have, like, big train pick up fluid, small train pick up very slow superconductive cable. Um, the only solution I have come up with for this is to have a timer and basically we keep alternating between different uh, provide thresholds, train lengths, etc. Um, but as it stands, I think I'll just allow long trains over here. And this is connected, right? Yep. Seems good. Oh, here comes our train. Fantastic. So superconductive cable is not broken. Good to know. And I think that was the only thing we were struggling on. No, no, no. Electric, bioelectric data, which is struggling on blank data cards and is going to take a while to saturate. And it's being demanded in like at least three places. Uh, bioelectric data is. Okay. What time is it? Surprisingly early. All right, let's head over to our construction ship. We'll get ready to go fix things at Sanj that require a direct touch. Sort of. Two grade upgrade to tier four insight. Uh, guess what? We've done that. That lofty goal has been achieved. How much significant data do we have? Surprisingly little. Because we're not getting biological insight? Oh, because we switched it over to tier 4 catalogs, but also tier 3 catalogs are missing still. Bioelectric data, like I was talking about before. Okay, it's going to take a while before we get any bio insight. Let's hop into our spaceship. And make a break for Sand. I'll just double check we've got things first. Uh, we have lots of energy beaming, media defense, belts, solar. Uh, we're only going there to deliver assembly machine threes, cannons, and some modules, really. But still feels better to have more than we need. And we are away. It's going to take a little while to get there. We're still accelerating, though. Uh, what else do I need to be doing in orbit, I wonder? I think we're waiting on a few things before it's really time to design a new block. I could... no, not really. I, I want to design the new junk data card recycling area. 
but I sort of need the computers first, so I can rate, calculate, etc. Uh, what was that other... Oh, oh, oh. Uh, there was heavy something. Heavy assembly. We haven't made any of those yet, I'm pretty sure. Heavy... Lamel. Uh, let's... Let's build those right about here, I guess. It actually needs bearing and composite and big electric motor. And all of those are really close to this block. One, two, three. So we'll start here. That's already got a station. Seems good. Bring our construction spiders. Oh. Uh, our construction spiders are upset with us. Let's send them to the mall first. Uh, how far can I go designing this thing to start with? We have three physical inputs at a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio. Four seconds crafting time, a little bit of lubricant. Uh, unless we're going to do some sushi, we're going to need two belts. Uh, which machines make this? Assembly 3s? Doesn't really show it if I look at it there. Yeah, Assembly 3s. Okay, what build do I have that uses a tier 2 beacon and has a fluid input and at least two belts of input. This one. Yeah, we can probably copy this. Uh, can we do better? There's no fluid involved for this one. Or this one. Those two are the same, actually. Also, those are chemical plants. Yeah, this uh, this is one fluid and two physical in, one physical out. Whoops. Three physical in, one fluid in, one physical out. But probably with the rate... We can just share a belt for two of those items. Are heavy assemblies used for anything useful? They are used in, drumroll, high temperature turbine generators, a black deep space splitter, Dimensional Anchor uses a star's gravity well as a stabilizing point for a spatial anomaly. Is that an endgame thing? Like, literally a win condition? Arco Link Storage. Container linked by extra dimensional space to other containers. That's awesome. Can I... Can I have, like, a network of these where many chests, including on spaceships, are linked to each other? Nexus. And antimatter engine. Okay. We don't seem to need that many of these. At all. I don't think we're actually, I mean, unless we want to mass produce the endgame belts, which, like, 
they're so late game to get them, I, I honestly can't see myself bothering. Um, yeah, I think the overall throughput for heavy assembly is going to be so low that we're not going to be... We're not going to be making a block for this, actually. In fact, the volume for these that we're going to build is so small that I almost think we should just do it in the space mall. Except we need fluid as well, so we need a whole separate... I think we've got lubricant somewhere? Yeah, we do. Um, come to think of it, we can build it in this, right? So if we abandon ye all productivity bonuses, uh, ye who enter here. Heavy bearing, heavy composite. Do we have both of those there already? We do. And big electric motors and... Yeah, we can just do this. The volume of these that we make isn't worth worrying about the productivity bonus to build it on Nalvis. Okay. Easy peasy. And limit that to, I don't know, I'm guessing it stacks to 50. Judging by what we saw in FNEI, um, if we limit this to like 500, that should be way more than enough. By the time you unlock Arco Link Storage, you already win the game? Yeah. Are you making the final spaceship? Uh, I might do that. I don't know of any other win conditions. Uh, does it tell me in the Informatron? Don't see it. Experimental status, recommended mods. Okay. Uh, yeah, I thought I remembered seeing some mention of victory conditions somewhere, but apart from seeing spaceship victory in the research screen, um, I don't know. We are approximately 33 minutes out from Sand. Okay. Did we get this sorted out? Oh yeah, I'm in the ship that did that. Dub. Alright, back to Nalvis. Uh, we want to... Continue removing these old ships. Um, do we have some... I think we do. We have some storage tanks. So, I think I might just add some... Oh, that's water. I think I might just add some storage tanks. And we can get rid of those. Oh, I guess the ship did land on top of the uh, spaceship floor, deleting the floor that was there. How rude. Okay. 
getting pretty close to empty. Oh, and we were making... Uh... Where is it? Oh, that's right. I already gave it the, um... Is this it? Didn't actually land. Oh, I forgot to give it... In the blueprint, I forgot to give it the, uh... Plant targets, which is actually quite fortuitous this time. Well, I was going to... No, I'll set this one up to just go to Sanj for now, but I need to, um, set up some replacements for the Morpheus ships as soon as possible. Oh, that doesn't have a pump? Huh. That's odd. Where does this go? Pump into here. And then... This whole area doesn't have any more pumps. Okay. That's probably fine for Ion Stream, honestly. The volume is not that high. See, it's already almost full. And heat is increasing. Fantastic. Uh, what about... We're not getting any requests set. Because this isn't connected yet. There we go. I forgot to include that in the blueprint. That's kind of a... Uh, maybe I should leave it like that. It's kind of like a safety feature. I have to do one manual thing. Even though all the logic is on the outside of the ship. Because I haven't put in... Well, I guess the liquid rocket fuel basically has to be full before it's going to launch. And Ion Stream, we don't have any trouble keeping up with. Yeah, I should probably update that blueprint. Uh, before we do that, I need something to update it to. So let's put down another space truck, or two even. Do you use any other mods besides recommended for space exploration? Uh, yes. Mostly quality of life stuff and also crafting combinator. Which lets us change recipes uh, in machines. Fantastic. I am going to put this here at zero, just to show that this is what this combinator is for. And we're going to connect this, and then I think that's pretty much it. Let's update our blueprint. Select new contents. Include tiles. Very nice. And... That is...
What the? Oh, we're missing a clamp here. Okay. Uh, if you're able to take off, you can go to Nowis already. Uh, let's refresh this thing. Fantastic. I see the new truck arrived, indeed. Do you use Crastorio? Nope. A lot of people seem to use K2 with SE. Yeah, it's very popular. Helicopter mod is pretty fun. That does sound useful. Uh, yeah, we're waiting on a spaceship clamp. How many clamps are we requesting here? Like five? Fifty. How did we run out of clamps? What? Clamp. I wonder if... I do not know. But we've got 50 on the way now. That's the Ford F1000? Indeed. Oh. Oh, I don't think... I don't think I've waited as long as I should have uh, to make sure this thing got some heat. It, in fact, does not have enough heat to do anything. We've got solar panels, so it, it's not dead in the water, as long as it doesn't go interstellar. Um, let's check on Nalvis orbit. I want to make... No, I mean on Nalvis itself. I want to make sure... Oh, it's trying to take off. Oh no. Wait, 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 wait. Where are you going? Is this thing that I feared happening? Your temperature is 503.25 degrees. It's not enough to run the turbines. We're not able to measure it, so we just have to sort of assume that this thing has enough. Which it doesn't. Um... What am I going to do? Uh, okay, this is Sanj 2. I forgot to name any of them. Thank you for the follow, GM Badas? Bada? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's just stop this one first. And then I need to find the other ones. This one. Please stop. Oh, it's going to try to auto-anchor. Sanj 3. Yeah, I was a bit too hasty with these. Oh, why is that spot not taken up? Sanj 3. Destination, Nalvis. Oh, I think the clamp IDs were wrong. Okay, cool. Sanj 1 is already at the destination, loading up on core fragments. Sanj 2 has the correct clamp IDs. Everything is working. The only trouble is I didn't give it long enough to heat up. And Sanj 3 doesn't have the correct IDs. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the launch signal until this thing has like 9,000 degrees or something. So now... If I look at Sanj 2, 
this is actually another advantage to not having the logic for where to go on the spaceship. Because I can send this back to Nalvis. And it'll wait there until it receives the launch signal. It's not gonna it, it's not gonna say, wait, but we've got X many ingots, therefore we're going to Sanj. Okay, so destination is Nelvis. Engage. Yeah, so we can't detect if a ship has, uh, if a energy beam receiver has enough heat that it's going to never run out, uh, that it's going to take a very, very, very long time to run out during an interstellar voyage. Um, it really doesn't take long to charge up some temperature here that's going to last a long time in space. So the time that it takes to load the ship and unload the ship, that's going to be enough. But we need it to have enough heat to make a trip first. A hey, Veldak, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, and I'll just check. We do have the energy being beamed into this one. 99.62 degrees. I would have thought that would be... Increasing. Let me just double check. Oh. Yeah, no, we do have 6.32 gigawatts pointed over here. For some reason, it's not reaching 10,000 degrees. Even though the steam turbines aren't doing anything, the condenser turbines. Well, it's fine as long as it works. How close are we to running out? Actually, nowhere near. Okay, cool. How far out are we? 32 minutes off. Still? Oh, density. We must have gone through an asteroid belt or something. Also, we're in interstellar space now, so we can't get more power from solar. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break. Unless there's something I can think of that I don't want to forget real quick. Like... No, that's already set up. Oh, I definitely want... You know what I should have done already? Um... Yeah, these two are pointed at the same spot. This one... No, that's... That's Nelvis. Well, that is still the same spot. Uh, this one, actually... Needs to be pointed over here. And then we can make two of these at once. So it won't take nearly as long to replace our old fleet. Left one has only one emitter. Uh, hold on a sec. Left one has only one emitter. Yeah, so I copy-pasted the Nalvis one twice just because I wanted to make it easy to adjust that later. But yeah, we've now got two of the... Uh, two of two gantries in Nalvis orbit with energy beam transmitters pointed at them. So we can prepare these ships. And one on Nalvis. We're going to need a lot of these small, uh, like low power relatively energy beam emitters. If we're going to have 
our space trucks if we're going to convert them all but uh, that's really not going to be a problem or anything thank you for the follow chupa dpr welcome welcome hope you're doing well no name good to see you again by the way welcome welcome hope you're doing well also okay uh time for a quick break i will be back relatively soon enjoy some ltn screensaver and i'll be back in a few minutes Oh wow, is that the old sushi cannon thing? I can't believe that's still there. That was so long ago. Yeah, there's a few things we can trim from this save. Uh, to bring back a little bit of UPS. Cat, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How's your stream today? Soulburn, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Sweet. 
so much sushi. Oh, and so many. <laughs> because of mistakes that we made, we've got a lot of specific delivery cannon capsules that we can't put back uh, where they need to go, except by manual insertion by the player character. Rip. Boring? Wait, what? Steam stream went well, no major disasters. <laughs> yeah, that is boring. How dare you. Uh, okay, so... Oh, I need to check on the Omni Smelters. So, final products. I only see stone brick. And some holmium ingot. I would be more concerned by that, but the problem that we had before was that we couldn't actually output the final products as fast as we should. Um, so in a way, this is actually good. Lots of stone brick, lots of holmium ingot, a little bit of iron plate. Uh, a lot of iron plate, no copper, glass, holmium ingots. What's this one got? About the same, but also 110,000 copper plate? Why are they so different? Seriously. This makes me all the more certain of something I said a while ago, that I think the next thing I need to do when it comes to iterating on Omni Smelter designs is I need them all to talk to each other. We need central planning because this block here is not making any copper plate. Uh... It's not making any copper plate, even though all of these other builds have zero copper plate at the moment. And... I mean... I, I wonder if we could change the... Provide priority of the stations dynamically based on things like that as well? If that would keep things more balanced? I do want them to prioritize a resource that we are lower on globally, but if we're actually full on copper plate here, this block would still not be making copper plate, even if Central says so, because it can't. Same applies if it doesn't have any copper ore, for example. So basically, what I've got up here is we've got try to make every single recipe and then we've got a bunch of conditions to say don't make that recipe actually um if this was hmm it wouldn't be easy to implement but if i had numbers on this greater than one a higher priority that could come in from outside Just a thought. Uh, we've got 147,000 copper plate here. 256,000 copper plate here. And 143,000 copper plate here. So it's really... It, it seems to have a very strong bias for scheduling shorter train journeys, which makes sense. Um, is this actually a problem? If we take all of our copper plate from here first, and then here, and then here... When we get to the point where, like, one furnace can't keep up with the copper plate, we're just going to be taking it from the other smelters? I'm not sure if this is actually a problem. You could generate the smelting queue dynamically? Yeah. 
based on available and required resources. Is it possible to do global network between all planets and orbits? Uh, definitely, yeah. It's just more the same thing, but more complex. Like a one plus one for priority and make that material that has the highest number. I think what I might do to help me, help me figure this out. Um, one of the older Omni Smelter designs I used had basically, it was vanilla, so there's no recipe setting, and you would feed resources into a chest, and the filters and circuit conditions and such were set so that you would never put in more than uh, five iron plate, two stone, the amount needed to make steel, or the amount needed to make stone brick. Iron and copper themselves were, like, negotiable. But the point is... Um, the individual inserters could pretty much act autonomously. The only trouble with this is you lose your productivity bonuses whenever you switch recipes. So I've actually got uh, a system in place here to very deliberately change recipes as rarely as possible. But putting that aside, if Individual smelters doing that, but I can introduce a priority system as well. I guess it doesn't make it any easier to think about it on a different scale. How I go about the priority system is probably the main challenge. Every other step is pretty straightforward. Like, we need to know globally how much of each resource we've got, that's just passing signals around. Um, we need to send orders to the Omni Smelters, that's just passing signals around, so we'll probably have like green circuit wire for the stuff we've got and red circuit wire for the requests or something. Uh, the real hassle, I think, is how do we take the signals that say copper plate is top priority, iron plate is second top priority, and so on, uh, and decide what to do with them with the circuit network. Something to think about. But yeah, as it turns out, we've got way more copper plate than I thought we did. So, and, and uh, unfortunately, I can't use, we used to be able to, where I was reading from the logistic network to tell LTN what we've got available here, but now it's just looking at what's in these chests, um, these requested chests. So if I use uh, LTN manager, where is it? LTN manager. And if I look for how much copper plate we've got in the network, uh, this number actually is going to grossly underrepresent how much we potentially have. How do the LTN requests work? If you cycle through the requests one resource at a time, you could assign different LTN properties to the resources. That's true. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think of for like... Uh, like I was talking about earlier, looking at looking at the pickup station for superconductive cable, which is actually being produced quite a bit lately. Uh, I wanted to have long trains pick up the negative 10 degree thermofluid, and only a short train pick up the superconductive cable. However, Unless I use a time, as far as I know, as far as I can think of, uh, the only way to have train length of three 
is what's permissible for the physical items, and train length of 3 to 6 for the long ones. But the only way I can think to implement that is to actually have a timer that cycles between two different sets of settings for LTN. And I'm not particularly keen on doing that. I may be keen on having more storage for superconductive cable. Let's see, it's just Holmium Cable plus Cryonite. It's actually quite cheap. But I don't think we need it in particularly vast quantities. Otherwise I wouldn't have done this in the first place. Oh, it goes into a lot of things. It's only five to make a efficiency module tier nine. Whoops. Didn't mean to click that. Glad it didn't do anything. Uh, tier eight is also five. Fifty makes a thruster suit mark three. I actually haven't done that yet. Or have I? No, we've got a thruster suit mark two here. Uh, let's see what else. Neural supercomputer only takes a hundred. Meanwhile, it takes a thousand processing units and a hundred bioelectric data. Aquarium heat pipe only takes one. Yeah. I don't think we need more than a short train picking this stuff up. Oh, what is happening with UPS now? It just, it just stopped. What was that? Coronal mass ejection heading for Palto. Palto is here. I'm pretty sure we have a uh, umbrella. And how much power do we have? The sun is going down. That's the problem. 1.2 gigawatts? I think we'll probably be fine. Uh, where is energy beams? ETA is 6 hours. 57 gigajoules over 120 seconds. 0.72 gigawatts peak power. Um, that's a lot, actually. Like, kind of a scary amount. We can't build the umbrella in orbit to protect the planet, right? I might have to... Eh, uh, the amount of effort it would take to deal with this. I feel like just hoping for the best, to be honest. Also, this doesn't seem to be in motion. Why do we have no... Oh, because power, that's why. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, so we're at uh, 31 minutes still. Well, I'm kind of can't think of something to do while we wait for this trip. Uh, what do we need to build an orbit that we haven't already? We've finished the space sciences, basically. We're just waiting for things to saturate so that we actually see it all working. We're still making significant biomass. We are picking up not the significant biomass. Check the change log. I think it was recent end of last year. Hey, fat boy, not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I thought you could. 
Uh, could what? Oh, for LTN? Put umbrellas or defenses in orbit. Oh, I thought it would be just for defenses. Uh, why don't we consult the Informatron? Umbrella energy beam defense. Protect against coronal mass ejections and space-based energy beam weapons. Realigns the clumps of particles. Only one is needed per surface against coronal mass ejections. Against energy beam weapons, one umbrella can defend against up to 500 gigawatts of attacking power. For a coronal mass ejection, the base power requirement for a 5,000 radius planet and 100% solar is expected to be around 160 gigawatts. Yeah, I don't see... Oh, there we go. The Umbrella can defend both a planet slash moon and its orbit from coronal mass ejections and energy beams. Placing the Umbrella either on the planet or moon or in orbit will protect both zones. That's very convenient. So... Not a whole lot of solar panels... Uh, for most of these. I'm pretty sure even at the edge of the solar system, building just a little bit of scaffolding, if, if we even bother with the scaffolding, because Orbit does have uh, some surfaces that we can use without putting down scaffolding. Umbrella. So, 10 megawatts, that's actually, like, nothing for solar panels in Nalvis orbit, for example. But it uses a lot more power when it's actually active. If only you could convert it into energy for your factory. We'd need some pretty beefy accumulators or something. Been drinking and watching the election all night. Oh. Umbrella defenses now protect both the planet slash moon and its orbit. CMEs are still on separate timers and will only target one of the two. Nice. Uh, yeah, if this had been the case when I started the playthrough, I definitely would have built umbrellas in orbit around these planets. Although, I say that, but if you don't have spaceships, it's actually a pretty big pain to go to both orbit and the planet. Because you need a cargo rocket to launch to orbit, and then you need a cargo rocket to go back somewhere else. And yeah, it's a mess. I I don't particularly want to be reminded of the dark times when the only way we had to get from surface to surface was cargo rockets. Okay, where are we now? 24 minutes remain. Uh, even though it's like Gimped and slow. I want to see how this is going. We're actually getting surprisingly close to filling this uh, ship already. But I think... Yeah, we've run out of... We're about to run out of delivery cannon capsules. Oh, we have run out of ingots. So, not too much longer. And we won't be able to make the delivery cannon capsules on the ground. Because I forgot that I didn't... Oh! What the... Where did... Oh. Um... Okay. I don't know where we got those prod sixes from. I think it... It was 12 of them, wasn't it? I think it was these machines over here, perhaps. 
I could also take them from... I mean, it's too late. We'll already have to send this ship back without it being completely full, but still. Um, I could take some... There's no prod sixes here, actually. Never mind. It's fine. Just like this beautiful power plant, which isn't trying very hard right now. 900 and... Okay, 1 gigawatt out of 2.8 gigawatts. But that's going to go up dramatically and very sporadically when we get all of these delivery cannons firing. Is it patch after you start the game? Uh, yes, yes it was. Uh, Noxie Way Gaming? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, is there any point in this ship still being here? I don't think so. Actually, I think I want to wait until we get all of these cannons firing as fast as possible, and then we'll see what it looks like. Uh... To have uh, for the power that is with all of the cannons firing as quickly as they can but the problem with this is I need to land a second ship down here but that probably isn't actually much of a problem I can literally just put this here put this here land the second ship like so It'll delete some cliff, that's fine. Yeah, that should be okay. Alright. Why don't we... Why don't we do a new build? I mean, an updated build. Or... One of our largest machine count things that are always in motion so we'll get some UPS back so we're looking at rough data storage substrates 200 machines I believe it was uh where's the count 360 iron plate per second 180 glass per second and we are indeed using 200 assembly machines for this. Where are our spiders? There we go. Um, I was going to maybe build it over here. Let me just make sure the spiders are empty. They're actually looking good. Rough data storage substrate. It's six things in, one and a half things out. So it makes a lot more sense to build this next to the smelters, as opposed to next to the uh, spaceships, the shuttles, that is. So I think I'll build one maybe over here-ish. And I'll just get rid of this old stuff. We know better than to make that a regular signal now. Although technically I guess it probably doesn't matter. One out vote of is going down bad, but hey, that's democracy. Uh-oh. Okay, uh, so we're going to need some beacons. We're going to need some power poles. I don't know if I have the spiders requesting the beacons that I'm looking for. Yes, I do. Fantastic. 
Although they seem to only have efficiency threes. I definitely dropped off. Okay, good. They've got some speed and efficiency here. Perfect. So we'll start with the usual requester. I need to figure out what kind of throughput we need first. As in where the belts are going to bottleneck and the train stations and stuff. Um, I really want to reduce uh, machine count as much as possible. So I think we will just go more and more speed modules these days, and if we need to make more power plants, we'll make more pla uh, more power plants. Then again, I, hmm, I was going to say maybe more efficiency modules means less need for power plants, means less fluid dynamics and stuff, but apparently this is a lot more UPS friendly than it used to be. But let's suppose for now we go with speed modules. We need some assembly threes. We need some prod threes, uh, prod sixes rather. The whole southern part of that base looks like a single large traffic jam. E yes, kind of. I've checked on this before and it is all still in motion, but... It could obviously be better. Um, that one's just going home. Yeah, it's not actually a traffic jam. But it's not good, either. Hmm... I don't know, is this a problem? You're trying to leave? Wait. What? Oh, this doesn't have a... This is missing a few green circuits. Why are we not getting copper plate here? Is this thing on? 64k? Oh, it doesn't have the same priority. That would probably help. That needs to be upgraded. That's what I should have done before I left. Oh well. No, I did drop off like all of my prods, didn't I? Uh, I think the construction spiders might have picked them up. Yeah, okay. Let's go with rough data storage substrate. And how much are we looking at here? Per machine, 1.89 per second. Almost one scrap per second. 4.85 iron plate per second. And exactly half of that for glass. If we scale this up... We're looking at just under four belts and two belts for 37 machines. 180 iron plate per second. Okay, let me compare this. Wasn't that what we got out of the entire block or half a block? Half a block. So, a hundred machines. If we go full speed module in these things, it takes like a third of that. 
a bit more than a third. 37 out of 100. Power consumption for each machine is 8.1 megawatts. We can definitely spare a few. Um, but what about the inserters? It's only... Okay, we need a stack inserter for iron plate. And maybe everything else can just be a fast inserter. Hey, who's Mike? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's see. All right. What if what if we try to fit the maximum? What does that look like? Don't know how many prods we've actually got here. And can we fit that twice? Probably, but not actually once we take into account how much space the train stations need. Unless we do this like horizontally, that might work. Okay, so let's say this is 48 machines times 4. Uh, is 192. If we were to really go ham here, we would need 931. <laughs> Iron plate per second, and we would output 363. How much are we actually... What's our limit in space right now? Per block, 173 polished data storage substrates per second. For the whole thing, uh, 347. If I can make one block that consumes that produces 347 per second. I could get rid of all the others. Uh, that's a lot though. Like 180 machines or something? Wait, are we now bottlenecked on the actual production blocks for data storage substrates? I think we probably are. We're aiming for like 350, right? Two hundred and thirty-seven. Yeah, we're bottlenecked on rough data storage substrates right now. Okay. How much is this again? 48. That gives us 90 per second. Except we need how many belts? Five point one six belts, I don't like that number. What if we just aim for, like, four belts of iron plate on each side? So, 180 per second? 179.4, 37 machines. I don't like the odd number. How about 36? Um... So, a column of nine for each of these? Wait, did I highlight nine? Yeah, there we go. Uh, one full belt of iron plate, 
half a belt of glass. 17 plus 8.5 out. Significantly less. Individual machines, we're looking at... Hmm. Probably a stack inserted just for iron plate. So long arm for glass. 2.425 per second. That should be okay for long arms with a stack size of 3, right? 432 degrees per second. Is 1.18 swings. Stack size 3. It takes slightly longer to pick up off the belt, with, but with a small stack size it's not that big a deal. Yeah, we should easily be able to keep up with the glass with the long arm inserter. Okay. In that case... Stack inserter go here. Couple of belts. Uh, we need to make sure there's room in the middle. We can just widen this very easily. Let's do a snap to grid relative. Flip it. And how many tiles do we need to make up here? One, two. Okay. So if we go nothing but speed module in the beacon, 8.1 megawatts times 48. is 384 megawatts, a bit over a third of a gigawatt, should be fine. Uh, so this is iron plate, glass, on each of these we're gonna have 24 machines, that gives us more than a full belt of output. Uh, can we widen this a little bit more? I think we can. And then... Same thing here. And individual machines output at a rate of three per second. Even with switching from one resource to the other, fast inserters should be fine for that. How many machines is this? Twelve. And we're going to have some splitters. How often should I have the splitters? Why not every pair? So 48 of these, well actually let's go 24 of these, 
uh, gives us slightly more than a belt of... And why am I blanking on rough data storage substrate? And then half a belt of scrap. I think I might be okay with just bottlenecking it on exactly one belt. HP Crusher, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Meant to make the columns nine high because of the iron inputs. Uh, yeah, that was before... Oh, no, you might be right. 58.2. E Yuck. Okay, we're just going to trim the last three of this. In that case, is the output going to just be one belt on each side? So 43.65. If we go for 10, that's 48.5. Uh, output is 34 plus 17. That is significantly more than 45 still. 51. Okay. But we'll treat it like one belt for the purpose of merging it. Um, so how much are we looking at here already? Four belts of iron plate. I don't think we're going to be doubling this down here. The train stations can only support so much. What are these bots arriving from? Oh. I think this is from ages ago. Actually, no, it shouldn't have been that long. I think it was from when they were deconstructing this stuff, and then I sent them to the mall to empty their inventory. But I guess they didn't get their inventory properly emptied or something, otherwise these bots would have crawled over sooner. I'm not entirely sure to be honest. Okay, we're going to put four belts of iron here. Actually, it's probably wise to merge and split it. Where am I going? Here. So let's do this off to the side. And then we'll do a boomerang belt balancer. I don't think we need a lane balancer, considering almost all of the iron plate that can fit through these belts is going to be consumed. And then that actually lines up perfectly. So I'll just double check. We did still need... Yeah, significantly more than one belt of output. Okay. That goes there. That goes there. And... Four for four. Nice. So this will be iron plate. And on this side... Glass. And I think we'll do an upside down left 90 per second. And then we just need the glass to go here, 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 and here. Um... Lane balancer shouldn't be necessary because we should be consuming from both sides of the belt equally, in theory. And 
and then it feels nice and very strange and unfamiliar being able to make such long underground belts. Okay. Can just put some efficiency on the beacon instead. Uh, yeah, I might do that. I mean, we've got the power to spare at this point. And I do want to reduce... Uh, uh, I want to reduce machine count as much as I can. But it might be going a bit overboard. Like, if we scale that up to everything we do in the base, doing something like this is not so great. But we'll see. Let's just put that there for now. Okay. This is going to go here. Uh, this is going to go here, and this will look a little bit awkward, but it's probably fine. So this is four belts of iron plate, two belts of glass. Two hundred and thirty-two iron plate. Wait, what? Ha oh, right, because we're only multiplying this by nine by four. Thirty-six. Hundred and seventy-four iron plate. Eighty-seven point three glass. Fantastic. So. If we do this, um, we get 36 or 48 if we maybe use some efficiencies. Machines on each side doing the job of 100 on each side that we had before. And we fit it in one block instead of two. Hello, T Hacks and Chat. Hey, Ryan. Hope you are having a great Saturday. Uh, thank you. Good to see you again, Ram. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so where am I going to output this scrap? Do I want... I think I want... Blank, uh, rough data storage substrates on the left. And scrap on the right. 36... 72... 136 per second. That is just barely over three belts. I'm going to pretend it's four. Uh, standard pickup on the left hand side. And high priority pickup on the right. Scrap is slower, right? Yeah, scrap is slower. How much scrap are we dealing with? 34 on each side, so it's only two belts. Um, let's do... Seventy... Yeah, call it four belts. We've got plenty of space. We'll do, uh, I think if we use a standard balancer with four belts coming in, 
Um, this should be able to keep up. But I want to experiment more with the new pseudo-balancer that I made up. So what we're going to do is have all of our input come into a belt balancer. Do I need a lane balancer? No, I don't think so. I think the inserters are going to pick it all up. Oops. Okay. So for each set of inserters, we're going to read hand contents on the last one, no condition, and then these other ones are just going to be everything equals zero. Wait, no, anything greater than zero. So as soon as this one picks up something, all of these others will activate as well. Um, it'll be pretty fast and pseudo balanced. Not perfectly balanced, though. Thanks for the stream. Night, everyone. Take care, Whiskers. Thanks for hanging out. And stack inserters go here as well. And then just a standard balance loader should be fine for the scrap. Copy this across. Okay. How much are we getting from 18 of these? Uh, 34. That's actually perfect. I think. So if we filter rough data storage substrates, I think this will be easier if we start from the left side, actually. So We'll filter scrap out. And this goes here. This goes here. How much scrap are we getting out of 36 of these? Less than one belt. Okay. In that case, we'll do it something like this. Trim that. And then... That looks okay, I think. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sure. Uh, and yeah, I think I will build another one of these. So I can't just copy paste flip this, we need a uh, right side bumper natalis. Uh oh. I need a station. Standard requester. And 
then we should be able to see where this lines up. Perfect. And this one's going to be an upside down right. 90 per second. Uh, we don't need to do anything fancy here. Iron plate. Glass. Connect to LTM. We need a boomerang. Uh, what? Oh. This goes here. And hopefully this all lines up the same way. See, that looks like it's one off. One, two, three. Yep. yep. This is one, two, three before the uh, substation pylon. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, I guess this part is actually going to be a little bit neater. Except, no it's not, because this doesn't line up now. I could move this over a tile. And then... All of this actually... Should copy paste. Perfect. What is this? Oh, I see. Wait, why is it higher? Uh, not that it matters. Okay, some of it kind of matters. Why? What? Oh. That looks kind of weird. What if... Oh, what the hell? There's an extra row of chests here. One row more of chests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so weird. Okay. I mean, we could have 14.4 train state, uh, train loads full of iron plate here, but I don't think that's strictly necessary. Um, so this one actually looks fine. Let's try that again. 180 per second left. And grab the boomerang. That actually doesn't line up the same anymore. Oh, yes it does. Because it goes here. And then... Can I copy-paste this at all? I actually can. Fantastic. nice and symmetrical. Wow. 
Wait, what? Confusion. I think my brain is running out of thinking juice. Who's there? It should be fine for all of them. Uh, does this reach? It does not. Okay, can we actually line all of these ones up? Yeah, I, I can live with that. Those ones are actually already aligned as much as my brain is trying to tell me that they are not. Okay, and why don't we do this? Seems good to me. Same length? I don't think so. One off. Oh, that's going to look slightly different. What can you do? in the rest of these. Until we can improve things. Whoops. And then once those are placed, I'll run the tier 6 over it. Alright, so we have 72 machines. The ones with prod 6s would add up to just over 3 belts of uh, rough data storage substrate. 350 iron plate per second, 174 glass per second. Just a little bit less than the belts can support. Request threshold, 160 stacks. Uh, we can fit 7.2 train loads. And this is a pretty high priority build. So let's say 64,000 for train loads. And we'll limit this to like five trains on each side. Iron plate and glass requester. Switch this on. 
And we need to finish the output. Uh, this part is going to be a bit different. So we've got one belt of scrap coming in. Oh, hold on. How much are we getting? 72, uh, almost two belts of scrap. Okay. Why don't we just bring the scrap to the middle? And then... Urge it here. Just like we did on the other side. This will go here. And... Like so. That's a decent fit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Close enough. Actually, is that the same height? No. Uh, that's too close for the other one. Now then. Oh, we also need to bring these belts together. Here and this one goes here. This one like so. Is that it? Scrap, scrap, one belt of scrap. Scrap, scrap, one belt of scrap. Did we get any deliveries yet? Oh, here we go. Uh, it's nothing but glass so far. Do we have iron? I mean, I would imagine we have iron. 12k... Uh, 190,000 iron plate. So it's just the trains taking their turn. At the moment. Where's our build? I forgot where we are. Um... We haven't reached our destination in space yet. Where were we building this? Oh, here it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to send this construction spiders back to base for a moment. And add this tag. I think this is all pretty much finished, except for maybe one little bit of belt that I miss.
we also... I don't know how badly we need better prods for iron and glass, but it all adds up in the end. Although, if we are generating a surplus of iron, it's not like producing more of it so that we delete it all more often is helpful. But it looks like the only thing that's come close in a long time is coal. Where's our decon spiders? Uh, I'll send them back to the mall. I imagine our iron plate is on the way here, but it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, here we go. There it is. Iron plate into the balancer. And down to here. Did our spiders just all walk over something? I think they did, actually. I think that was the UPS dip. Great, machines are in motion. Inserters seem to be keeping up quite easily. Fantastic. Uh, and what was the name of our station? Rough Data Storage Substrates. We're not going to go much faster than this without some direct insertion. So if we have 72 of these machines prod 3 we get 136 Rough Data Storage Substrates per second. Uh, our target for orbit. Is double this. 347 per second. Hmm. Wait, where is it? Where, where were we building? Oh, there it is. What was I about to rate calculate? Oh yeah. So it was like 350 per second. And we're able to churn out 136 per second. So we need... We need more than two of these blocks. To pull that off. That's pretty harsh. That's very harsh, actually. Oh well, this will help for now. I might copy paste this block, maybe even twice, and then we'll get rid of this monstrosity with its. 200 assembly machines. Alright, I think I'm going to wrap up the stream there for today. Let's find someone to raid. Who is playing the Factorios? Mucky? I think I raided Mucky like a day or two ago. Uh... SE biggest 1050 SPM test. That is not small. Oh, that's Japanese. No, wait, it, they're speaking English. Okay, cool. Let's give that a go. 
Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you like, if you have any questions or anything, by all means. Uh, thanks for Aaron, take care. And let's check out this uh, 1,000 science per minute, well, 1,050 science per minute uh, SE base. Take care, Veldak. Thanks for hanging out. And let's spam some spiders. Take care, Daniel. And away we go.